In a world where Carolina Panthers fans have an insatiable thirst for Panthers news and opinions, only one podcast roars ferociously. It's the C3 Panthers Podcast. Yo, what's the deal, Panther fans? It's your boy, the professor, a.k.a. Tony Dunn. It's the C3 Panthers Podcast, brought to you by CarolinaCatChronicles.com, where every Tuesday night, the most lit Panther fans chop it up. From the fan perspective, we're the longest running Panthers podcast around, including the team itself. So what we ask for you is to be a part of the community. Call into the show at 252-228-5098. Go ahead and smash the thumbs up button. Look, this big ass broke thumb. Smash the thumbs up so hard I broke it. Broke it clean across. Right, so be a part of the community. Get in the chat room. Tell a friend about the show. I love when people hit me up on Twitter at cat underscore chronicles uh, to to build this community together. And tonight we've got a great show for you guys. Marty Herney is gone. In fact, tonight's show is called Marty Gone, and uh, the Carolina Panthers have finally given Marty Herney the axe. So we'll be talking about why, why, and finally why the timing, why it was right, and where the Panthers go forward. But we've also got a big presentation tonight. Tonight, uh, prosecutor Cody Lashney is going to go to a Panther Nation jury and plead his case for trading up to the number one spot for Trevor Lawrence. And he believes he knows how to do it and why the Carolina Panthers should do it. you got to hang out uh, to hear that conversation because – it is, in some people's minds, brilliant. In other people's minds, bizarre, right? So we've got that. We've also got to talk about uh, the Packers game, comments from uh, Tepper on Marty Herney on Teddy Bridgewater. So a ton to chat about tonight when it comes to the Carolina Panthers. Again, we want your input. The number is 252-228-5098. Let's go ahead and get into it. Cody Lashney, my friend, my co-host, welcome to the C3 Panthers podcast. Tony Dunn, Christmas has come early like a high schooler (laughs) on prom night, and I'm fucking pumped about it, dude. I'm so pumped that I prepared a PowerPoint presentation for y'all tonight. We're about to go hard tonight. Listen, on my TV, I got some Zach Wilson balling out for BYU right now. I'm talking about the Carolina Panthers after we just fired our terrible fucking GM, Antonio Dunn. We're going to do it with the best fans in all of YouTube, damn it. Underground West, Bill Dotrieve, Humble Flip, No Fool, The Bat Daddy, Elucid Proximity, 10 Tizzy, 704 Bound Charlotte, QT Zero, Cousin Chef Jeff, Tony Dunn, ain't nothing to it but to do it, brother. Let's roll. The man of many podcasts, Greg, my friend, the Bat Daddy 52. Welcome back to the C3 Panthers podcast. Thank you, sir. Good as always. You know, me and Cody have been talking for a couple of days about this conversation we're about to have, and I knew it was going to, he was going to bring the heat. So I had to bring the war hammer just in case I got to whack a mole Cody for talking some nonsense. But I doubt I'll have to do that. I'm sure he's going to make a good argument. I'm interested to hear what he has to say. My head's uh, hard enough anyway. I hear you. All, all I'm saying is I'm watching a guy right now that we don't have to trade up for that just threw five touchdowns in the first half of this game. So yeah, we might still have we'll, to trade we'll up for him. Hold tight. We'll yeah, you're right. Well, you're right. We've also got Jason Hewitt, <laughs> SI.com, um, and friend, just friend of the podcast. How you doing, man? What's up, y'all? I'm doing good. Um, Marty is gone. It is a new day in Carolina. And I'm excited to put y'all, man. I'm excited to hear their presentation too because I'm on the trade for tra- trade for Trevor train as well. But at the same time, I feel like we have a different approach to it. So I- I'm just looking forward to it all, man. 
All right. Sounds good. All right. Let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, Yesterday morning around nine o'clock, David Tepper held a Zoom press conference where he announced that Marty Herney would no longer be a part of the Carolina Panthers. He would not be the GM going forward. And it was a pretty, um, in some ways, you know, some people might not uh, care for Herney, I mean, not Herney, uh, Tepper and how blunt he can be or or honest, it seems like. Mm -hmm. But I think he, he told us uh, a lot of what we've all been thinking and saying, and that is that Marty Herney's just a little bit too old school and uh, that he has been kind of just looking for a new way to run a football organization. And he decided to part ways with Marty Herney. Um, I think he gave us some insight into why now and not last year. Cody, how did you rejoice when you heard this news? I literally got up in the morning to my Twitter mentions, just exploded of everyone adding me and asking me what to do, what we're going to do next and what's happening. And then I finally see the headline, Marty Herney has been fired. And it felt like a, 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 a hundred pound weight had been lifted off my chest, man. There has never been a more important off season in the history of the Carolina Panthers than the one that we're about to go through. It is absolutely imperative that we have a competent general manager that knows how to evaluate talent, who knows how to manage the salary cap, and who knows what players to sign and not sign. This is very important for us, man. And I'm hoping that David Tepper has the insight to bring in the right person for the job. And I'm hoping that uh, he uh, casts the net far and wide because we're going to have a ton of competition. Uh, it, this should have happened last year. Now we're going to have to be in competition with a bunch of other organizations that have more money than us. They have more draft picks than us. Um, some of them have better draft picks than us. So um, it's a very inopportune time. But man, thank God it happened, dude. It had to happen. You all know I've been yelling this from the top of my lungs. Uh, I said I would die on the hill, man. Whenever I say I'm going to die on the hill, that is something that fucking I believe has to happen. It finally did. And I'm just basking in uh, how this feels right now. I tell you this is that I think um, I can see some of the wisdom in the timing of this GM move. All right. I was looking at a story and I've been, uh, and I would say some of the wisdom, I disagree. I wish, I wish I would have happened last year. I've told you, I've made my point clear on this podcast over and over that I like the idea of a GM and a head coach being lockstep together in vision and accountability. So one thing is this, is that you bring in um, a coach or a GM and they're not together then when something goes wrong or when it doesn't work as planned or any disagreement comes about, a sort of power struggle seemingly can arise. And when you bring them in tethered together, they can either swim together or sink together. That, I think, unifies their vision a little bit more. But now um, the Carolina Panthers have hired Matt Rule to a, a, a giant contract, right? Eight years sort of nearly, un- not, I won't say unprecedented money because Gruden got some crazy money, but big, big time money too. Enough to get yeah. him to leave a big time program that was in very good shape um, with a lot of interest from other NFL teams. So I thought that now you got to bring in a GM and he's got to be able to work effectively with Matt Rule. He's got to, their visions need to be able to mesh and they need, they need to mesh with David Tepper's, but I was reading a story today on the athletic. And I think one of the guys that writes for the athletic is, what is his name? He was talking about how, um, it's not necessary that you have to, uh, hire a GM first, or that maybe we give GMs too much credit for how power exists in an organization. And he said, you should not liken it to that of the MLB terribly. Uh, but instead think of it by, you want to know who has the power in the relationship. Look at the contract. He referenced Oakland or LA, Las Vegas, third time's a charm. Las Vegas is being a good example of this is why Mike Mayock is the GM there. John Gruden is 
the hundred million dollar man. So to say one holds sway over the other, really follow the paycheck in that way. So I do think it's possible in the NFL for it to work in this fashion. I think it was an appropriate time now because, guys, we need to get a head start on scouting. We need to get a head start on developing that vision with the GM and Coach Rule together. And I'm glad that we did not wait to the end of the season. If anything, it could have come maybe a month earlier. Guys, uh, Jason, let's go to you. How did you, what you. How did you receive the news of Marty Herney's departure? All right, so it, it's actually crazy. So around this time last year, I actually published an article with SB Nation saying that Marty Herney appears to be safe from the Panthers' chopping block. And it's this one sentence in here that's actually kind of crazy. So basically what I said, I'm paraphrasing here, was that basically Ron Rivera and Marty Herney have similar styles, and their styles kind of coexisted with one another, which is why they work so well. But at the same time, like you, you fire Rivera, but you keep Herney around for what reason exactly? Now, sure, he hired um, the, the VP of football operations and director of football operations and everything like that to help him out. But at the same time, why keep him around if he has that same conservative mindset when it comes to the game of football right. when you have, I guess, other guys who you could go after back then. And so here we are now kind of like in the same situation where you have to ultimately find the guy. I mean, it's, it's almost a mirror image to me. It it, it felt like we, we uh, kicked the can down the road for no reason. I mean, I I said this last year, there was no reason to to keep him on at a point in time where your whole uh, football team, be it the front office, your personnel, Everyone is going through this new transition into a brand new phase of Panthers football. And I just don't see what the point was in having Marty for as long as we did. Um, you know, it, it never made made sense to me. Um, I will this say is this. why here the- there is a little bit, and I think I started to see it from his interview. And this is a quote from David Tepper. He says, quite frankly, I think it was good for Matt and good for me to have another year with Marty. Marty's a great guy to have as a teacher and a person uh, like that around. I think what this is, is that I think David Tepper knew that everybody was going. What was going to be the most successful exodus, I think. And I think he knew that given Matt Rule, a NFL franchise with zero experience, and then saying, hey, uh, here's a brand new GM that's never probably been the GM. And you guys, good luck is that he gave a uh, rule an opportunity to get his sea legs. Now they can bring in somebody that they together, Herney, I mean, not Herney, Tepper and rule see as their kind of guy. Well, and I did want to mention this, the best thing that came out of either of the interviews with either Matt rule or David Tepper was when Matt rule said, I do not want to be GM. And that made me just like that took more weight off my body. Because I cannot stress enough, your head coach and general manager need to be separate. The guy who calls the plays needs to be different than the man who signs your check. Because they're they're incentive laden. If a receiver gets a certain amount of catches in a season or a certain amount of yards, then incentives kick in. If you have a coach who, who writes the contracts, knows the incentives, you don't want them to be game planning to make sure that a character or that a, a, a player doesn't get whatever the amount of reps or whatever. That way they hit certain roster bonuses. You just don't do it. It's never been successful other than Bill Belichick. And I would say Bill Belichick, not coach, but Bill Belichick is one of the most overrated general managers that there is in the NFL today. So that makes me happy because that says to me, we don't want someone that's going to be a yes man to Matt Rule and does everything that Matt Rule says. Matt Rule wants there to be someone who is in charge of running the daily operations of the football team and managing the 53-man roster. That's incredible. I love that. Greg, the Wicked Witch, the Wicked Witch Herney is gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, your thoughts? Uh, well, you know, I, I still in the same kind of way I was before where I'm not – preaching that Herney was the best GM ever because he definitely wasn't. But 
I don't think he was that bad of a guy. I mean, he had his faults and he had some things that he, you know, wish we could have changed, but every GM's like that, you know, uh, people, I think people focus too much stuff on a GM that that's not necessarily their fault. And when they're arguing for other GMs, they'll, they'll use those same things. They mess with G Ernie, Ernie with that, that, you know, they don't count against other, other uh, GMs. I mean, look at John Lynch. We, we would consider John Lynch to be one of the best GMs. I think I brought this up last week. He's had a great drafts. So it's not just about how you draft. They've done great with their with their salary cap. Everything over there is great. One winning season in four years, and they lost I, in the Super Bowl. I think a lot of point. One winning lost. season with all that great drafting. So it's not the GM. That, I'm telling you, man, it's it's not all about hitting well, so also many different about things. Context yeah. too. They didn't right. have their quarterback until they traded for Garoppolo. Then they had a bunch of injuries. You know, it, it, it takes time to build so, this. So thing. we, so we can, we. I just, I want to point out, we can't talk about John Lynch and give him credit with injuries, and not give Marty Harney credit with injuries. A lot of people who drafted, he had problems with injuries. I with. think, I think so, we're losing. I think we're, think we're missing the point. Fair. I think we're, I, I think we're missing the point now because now that Marty Harney's gone, is yeah. ultimately whether or not he is average, below average, terrible. Is not, not our problem anymore. Right. right. And exactly. and He's I don't wrong. even know if it's an argument. We've debated it for the last month, I feel like, heavily on the show. That is the exact question we need to be asking. Instead of asking whether or not Marty Herney is a good, bad, or whatever GM, what we need to be asking is what kind of football program does David Tepper want to build and what he has in mind. Right. And what we've seen is as David Tepper has come in, and he said this, he, he said it over and over. He said, the first thing I wanted to address was the business operations side. We saw some vast changes made into the organization on the business side, even from the deals with the Pepsi, the, going to Coca-Cola, right, over Pepsi, I think, or vice versa. The building of the complex, the question, right, is that he has gone aggressively at this. He looks at the Carolina Panthers as a billion dollar business, which it is. Yeah. And he is interested in pushing and furthering that along. What I see now is he's starting to talk about the way a front office, he is in many ways contending, or at least he suggested in his interview that football operations themselves are somewhat archaic. And that it's time for them to take a, or he would like to be part of the next evolution of thinking of how a football team is run. And I think that goes from, and that's not talking about how practices are run. Maybe a little bit of that. Maybe it's some about how plays are called and players are called. You know, you hear Matt Rule saying, oh, well, this only count, converts 7% of the time. But I think he's thinking in more theoretical terms of how do you get um, a guy who is the GM, a guy that then surrounds himself with the team, and that team is then working effectively with the owner, and the owner and the coach are working together. And it seems like Marty Herney is just a relic of the past, while my, uh, David Tepper wants the young, forward-thinking Wall Street guru to take over the football side of the operations. And I think that why that's why he believed Matt Rule was so important because he thinks he's inventive in those ways to a degree. Mm -hmm. uh, seven of four bound Charlotte says Tipper said he wants playoff Super Bowls and uh, winning for years to come. That's great. I, it's a good thing no other team wants that. Should be easy to obtain. Right. <laughs> well, here like, and and to be fair to to Tepper on this is that about uh, banging a square peg through a round hole is not the way to do it. And yeah, what right. we've been doing is is that in many ways we have um, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and over again, and hoping different results. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that if this is exactly what he's saying is. That it would be insane for me to not try to break out of this rut. And I need to find, oh, it's on Panthers.com. That's where it's at. All right, so I'll turn the mic over to you guys to take the conversation to the next step. Well, let me first let me, let me me first do this. There are 32 likes and 66 people watching. Act like you got some sense and hit the like button, y'all. I'm about to show y'all how the Panthers are going to move up to draft Trevor Lawrence. Marty Herney is gone. This is time for celebrations. Hit the like button 
and let's fucking go. You know we're going to do this every Tuesday night. And look, one of the things I did want to mention about this whole thing um, is I, I find it funny that uh, wasn't it the same time last year that uh, Ron Rivera was fired? Like it was around the same time. We don't think it was three or four, three or four mm-hmm. games uh, left in the season. And it, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like David Tepper, even though he was late on firing Ron and Marty, one of the things that I do commend about him is his ability to say, okay, I tried something, I made the wrong move, but now I'm going to cut bait and I'm going to start the process early on doing the right thing. And I feel like, you know, we don't have a very large sample size as far as David Tepper's decisions are concerned. But what we do have, I feel like, other than cutting Cam Newton, which that's a whole other debate in and of itself, but <clears throat> David Tepper has made genuinely good decisions for our franchise. And, um, you know, I- I'm happy that he's uh, made the moves that he has. Here, I want to get into some quotes that Tepper... So this is kind of a and a that was highlighted by Darren Gantz in the Zoom call. And he said, and the question was, could you walk through the process of the decision? Tepper says it's been an evolving decision. It wasn't on a whim, um, but basically they had some difference, a little bit of difference in philosophy. He leaned more towards traditional techniques versus a more data-driven analytic process. But I think of of marrying the two. Um, and then it's and then so basically he goes on to say that um, he wants more collaboration. And he's not saying that there wasn't, that's where people don't always agree, and that there wasn't any collaboration. But he just says, "Is a, here's the question, is a cr- certain creative tension between a coach and a GM a good thing for a team? He says, I think there should be discussions, and people don't all the time have to, don't have to agree all the time. They shouldn't agree all the time. But we should have to, the goal to win or to be the best you can't possibly be. And he goes on to say that he wants to avoid silos going on to build a new football structure. Um, so, I mean, this is, to me, why I keep Herney at this point, and I won't say not at this point this year, is that this is a, at some point, you got to turn the page. And this year, what we have seen, Marty Herney is the last relic of the Jerry Richardson era. The statue is gone. Cam Newton is gone. Luke Keekley is gone. Um, Everybody, there's nothing there other than maybe one or one player or two that have any, that have some fingerprint or a few players that have their fingerprints because of Marty Herney. But this is a turning the page of an era. And to speak on that is that, look, if you think about it, last year it was um, Ron Rivera. The beginning of this year was Cam Newton, and the end of this year was Marty Herney. Uh, I wanted to uh, pinpoint a, a comment real quick, just because I thought it was funny. Uh, Kevin Boshoven in the chat says he likes to fire people at Christmas time. He's a Christmas movie villain. <laughs> oh, that is <laughs> true. Um, hey, the, those guys always lose, though. It so was the care. day after no, his oh, birthday, no. Marty Herney's birthday. Oh, hey. <laughs> well, I mean, he could have done Happy it on birthday. Sunday. Have you heard? You always see every year football players getting released on their birthday. And like the team will put up like a happy birthday post to them in the morning. And then after the game, they get cut. And you're like, oh, that didn't age <laughs> yeah. well. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the cat calls and see what some fans have to say about this. The number's 252-228-5098. So what are your thoughts on catcalling? Yeah, it's pretty sh- You shouldn't do that to somebody. And how did that make you feel? Uh, very uncomfortable. So how do you think catcalling makes the person feel? It feels good, like... Hi, fellas. Kyle from VA. Uh, just... Just got the notification that um, that we have fired Marty Herney, and uh, I'm sitting here reading the article from the Panthers, and it's saying that uh, Tepper 
you know, uh, Herney and Tepper clearly had uh, different views of what this team should be going in the future and that he wants to, you know, more data-driven and Herney's more the traditional. And I know that a lot of people say Herney's done a good job, and he has to some aspects, but... You know, even Tepper admitted it. You know, he hears the people, the fans talking, that he should have been done this when he uh, hired a new coach. He should have been, went and got a new GM. But nevertheless, he's doing it now. And uh, Tepper obviously has a vision for this team and wants to make this team a successful franchise. And, I mean, I'm excited. And I uh, wish the best for Herney, but... It's time to go get a new one, go get a new GM, and and I, I feel like we've had a good season so far as far as, like, all the new pieces we have. So next year, just hopefully we can build on that. We can get a GM in here soon, get him to rule and everybody on the same page. And uh, props to Cody, man. Props to Cody. <laughs> I know he's going to be good. Crazy on the seven night. Anyways, I will catch y'all on the show. Keep on All right, man. Thanks for the call. Let's go ahead and pound. I feel like maybe I haven't delivered enough. Like everyone's waiting for me to like fucking take my shirt off and you know go. (laughs) Listen, (laughs) I I, I am, I am, I am elated, man. I'm so happy. I've been happy for two days, man. I haven't put on Twitter. (laughs) David Tepper doing this made all of 2020 worth it. Was fucking whatever, right? We're in our emotions. That's how I feel. So, yeah, man, I'm just happy that we finally made this move. I'm feeling like I did after Ron Rivera was fired. It, it was a move that needed to be made. It's never personal, man. I don't know any of these dudes. I'm sure they're all wonderful guys, family men, all that good stuff. But, look, it's time for us to move on and do some bigger and better things with some new people that have a new set of eyes to look at a new situation with. It, it's It's time. It's time. It's time. No, you're absolutely right, and I think we need to kind of jump on that train of of like, hey, look, is is football? The world is changing so quickly around us. Think about what a GM must be going through trying to figure out, like a GM like Marty Herney trying to figure out how to zoom everything <laughs> and use file share rather than attaching documents to emails. And I know that sounds like uh, me, you know, make basically Marty Herney's personal email is a Yahoo account still. Um, yeah. He still clicks on the Internet Explorer browser <laughs> and he thinks E stands for Internet. Homeboy still has a Palm Pilot. Yeah, and um, and look, football is is and that doesn't mean that the next the young thing always trout you know trounces the old hat, but we are evolving, and football is evolving in the same way, and to think that you could bring in like a Bill Parcell, and just because he did it in the eighties, in the nineties, or something like that, in the nineties that he can replicate that in this era is a little foolhardy. You don't maybe take over that way. Then you should replace um, a fortune 500 executive for a, for a tech company with an old industrialist CEO. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next call. Mm-hmm. Hey guys, this is Chuck from Elizabeth city. Calling. What's up Chuck? Got quite a bit on my mind uh, today uh, after watching the game Saturday night. <clears throat> kind of first want to look at this game. I guess it would be the best scenario that we could expect for moving up in the draft since we've moved up to number four. Um, we, we, I thought we played a really good second half competitively on defense. Uh, I was really impressed with the young drafted rookie, Miles Hartfield. I think he played well. Of course, Jeremy Chin still balling out, doing what he does. Number one pick, Derek Brown. This was his coming out party. He looked really explosive and disruptive. And, of course, Brian Burns. I think we're doing okay on defense. I, I, I really like what our Phil Snow has put together, and I, I think we're, um, we've we got more pieces than we think. There's a lot of young guys on this team, and we'll find the talent. Uh, one of the big issues I had 
you know, we, we definitely still want to win. But in this situation now, it's looking good, coming close. You want to be competitive and see growth, but you still kind of want to come up short now because this draft pick is so, so valuable now. And, uh, you know, I found myself rooting. We got a chance for down 14-3. to three. We get the ball downfield. Teddy finally threw a nice long deep ball to DJ Moore. And still behind him, though. Is that yeah, it was we get the nice situation ball. here. <laughs> first and goal. Maybe the play call wasn't the one that Joe Brady should have made. But uh, Bridgewater just putting the ball out like that and fumbling was was so irresponsible. And he was becoming such a thorn <laughs> on our side, in our team's side, that I just – I realized if I had to suffer with him for one more year – but he definitely, he definitely is not the answer. Um, but I really did like what I saw from a lot of young guys on this team. I think we played well and competed. If anybody watched that game through and through by the end of the game, and you could even hear the announcer say, hey, this Carolina team, they're young, they're developing, they're getting better. And I think that's one of the things we can look forward to with this team. All right, we're going to go to the second part of his call in just a moment, guys. Let's uh, And we're not going to get too much into the game in this part of the show. We're going to save a little bit of that, that later um, because we're kind of in the Marty Herney news and the change. But Derek Brown really did show out today uh, on, on Saturday and finally kind of that monster in the middle, getting pressure in that way. But this defense was the story of this game after, I want to say, um, they scored a touchdown. They scored two touchdowns in the first quarter and then another one in the second quarter at three minutes and 31 seconds left in the second quarter. After that, the Panthers defense forced the Packers to punt one, two, three, four, five times in a row then held them to a field goal and one more punt by the end of the game. This defense really did turn it on. Thoughts on Derek Brown and the defense, guys, before we go on to the second part of the call? I was thrilled with Derek Brown. Uh, listen, I feel like even, you know, people know I want Isaiah Simmons. So it's like whenever Derek Brown does good, it's like, oh, look at Derek Brown now. You didn't like him on well, draft night. clearly the right pick. It turned out to be the right pick. Derek well, and, and and my my problem was never with Derek Brown, the player. I I never disliked Derek Brown. I think he was rated number eleven or twelve on my big board. Like I, I rated him high. I just don't think that you should take a, a one technique defensive tackle with the top ten pick. I know but you should did. take a tight and, end. And, but yeah, but listen, but we did anyway. And uh, defensive tackle that is going to be a uh, one of. Uh, an area of strength for us going forward because no matter what we decide to do, if it be a four three or a three four, by the time we get some more personnel, everything is going to run faster and more efficiently because of Derek Brown being able to blow up the interior of the offensive line. I mean, the guy is a monster. Um, his, his technique has really come a long way this season. Um, and you can tell he's putting time in, he's putting work in. The dude has incredible strength. Incredible strength. Dude, Once and he's have, played every game, he's been uh, available. And while yeah. he is, and he leads the league, not leads the league, but has really great numbers when it comes to tackle for loss, uh, getting pressure. He finally got home twice. And I think, Cody, is that uh, we don't even need to bring in Isaiah Simmons versus, is that when you couple Derek Brown now with how great Jeremy Chin has been, is really kind of the. We had so many just gaping holes in our defense after the retirement of Luke Keekley, after uh, just ultimately the downfall of KK Short, James Bradbury. We're leaking like a sieve, and you and Derek Brown plugged up a big gap in that the hull of the Carolina Panthers boat, and Jeremy Chin kind of was like the sump pump getting the water out. Yeah. Yeah, the de the defense was was very impressive, and you know what's funny about the defense is they've been able to keep us in every game this year, almost every game this year. The defense has given us a chance to tie or win the game, or to at least have the opportunity to do that. So, I mean, while we haven't had the best defense ever, I think the defense kind of plays to its competition a lot of times, like a lot of people think the offense does. But Derek Brown uh, is looking great, and it's good to see that if we spent seven picks on defense, that towards the end of the year we're starting to see some of the fruits of that that the defense looks like it's starting to improve. These guys are starting to mesh. And 
maybe next year the the defense is going to be even more solid, and that'd be really nice to see. Jason, thoughts on the D in Green Bay? Absolutely. The fact that they held Aaron Rodgers to, what was it, 143 yards was impressive enough because I thought it was going to be a field day for him. I figured that he'd throw for 300, multiple touchdowns. Mm -hmm. It would just be a wrap, and that wasn't the case. Initially, it was looking a little rough, I'm not going to lie. But eventually, they held it down. They meshed together. And when it comes to Derrick Brown, look, man, Derrick Brown has been producing all year. The thing is, you just don't see it on the, the stat sheet, man. Right. When you watch the line of scrimmage, they're doubling him. The fact yeah. that you have to double team a rookie is insane. He's to me, so anyway. strong. This guy is so strong. Like, he looks like exactly. – um, who was it? Did you see the guy, uh, the Saints defensive end in that Chiefs game, the white guy with the blonde hair? Uh, yeah, Trey Hendrickson. Yes. He was just bull rushing that poor left tackle. I mean, he wasn't trying to put moves on him or nothing. He just manhandled this dude all the way to the quarterback. That's kind of what Derrick Brown can do, and he's like 20. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, And it's – go ahead. Interesting note, though. You mentioned that uh, Aaron Rodgers had 143 yards passing. Aaron Jones did have 145 yards rushing. Um, But they (laughs) did really tighten it up at the end – or after the second quarter – Second half, and we've been known for slow third quarters as a team. And uh, to think that and this and this isn't a slouch team, we gave Kansas City problems with Patrick Mahomes, you know, or at least impeded their progress. And we definitely gave Aaron Rodgers more difficulties than he had against the Saints. Yeah, 704 Bounce Hall yep. that was in the chat said that uh, he was listening to Aaron Rodgers on uh, Pat McAfee's show this morning. And uh, Pat or, uh, Aaron said that the 335 defense that we ran really did uh, give him problems in the he passing. He said it was game. weird. Yeah, he was just like, it's weird. I don't even know what it is. And what it means is this is we're just going to go box out downfield and good luck. Just well, it shows how rare what the Panthers do on defense actually is. And I maintain that this isn't a, a, a conscious decision by Phil Snow. In fact, they even said on the broadcast that, uh, you know, even the Panthers coaches don't know quite what this defensive alignment is. That You know, the, the roster is young. They still need more talent. It's a work in progress that's still evolving and growing. Um, so a, a lot of people have been concerned about that. I know people on this podcast have said it too. Um, I wouldn't worry about the three three five moving forward. I don't think that'll be what we continue to do. Um, I just think that's what we're kind of ham fisted into having to do right now. Yeah, especially with that secondary. Nick Montier with a uh, super chat. Thanks, Nick. Uh, anyone see the close up of Rogers at the end of the game? He asked. He was shook. The defense was getting to him, and when we've gotten pressure. We've made um, some. We've made it difficult on quarterbacks. It's just when they've got to sit back there and pick us apart that it's been problematic. All right, let's go to part two of Chuck's call. Don't worry, folks. In just a moment, we're going to be getting to Cody's case for Trevor Lawrence and how the Panthers can and will get him. All right, back to Chuck in Elizabeth City. Hey guys, this is Chuck from Elizabeth City calling again. Uh, this call, I want to really concentrate on. I really had a lot to say leading up to the weekend about Marty Herney. I went back and pulled some things, and one of the things I was looking at was um, the 2019 draft, Brian Burns. Definitely that was a great pick. Um, But I look at Marty Herney making these picks. When we had a a second-round pick and two-thirds, we really wasted those picks. First of all, Herney trades up. Ten spots to pick Greg Little. We probably could have had another offensive lineman or a different player, but he really gave up the the, uh, third-round pick to Seattle to move up ten spots, along with our second-round pick. So we ended up taking three picks from round two and two picks from round three, and we got a guy in Greg Little who really is starting to show a little bit of a bust, and, and 
I can't give up on him yet, but it definitely looks like we gave up too much capital to move up. We should have stayed where we were. Second of all, our last pick in that draft that year in the third round, uh, the 100th pick, we took Will Greer. And all, all Marty Herney kept saying is, we got our quarterback. He was the best one evaluated. I think we definitely know this could be Marty Herney's downfall. Because when you look who, made that, who made that noise? i got to know. That was me. And I definitely okay. see him back. And Herney, Herney is kind of – he's dug his own grave. And I want to throw Tepper into this because if you really want to look at it, Tepper brought the team in 2018. But he came in after the 2018 draft. So that 2019 draft was the first draft Tepper had. And he kind of was getting his feet wet to see what we had. I think he sees what Tepper did. I mean, what, what Herney did. I mean, he had a third round pick in 2018 in Golden that, that got released oh, not even a year that's into the worst. it. And, you can't and I like the Golden pick. waste some talent like that. And, and he, he has shown that. Uh, now, the 2020 draft, Herney had a spectacular draft with Brown. Uh, then getting, uh, we got Chin. And um, I'm trying to think of who else we got. Gross on the coast. Uh, and I'm looking at it. And it's a great draft, but was that a Marty Herney draft, or was this Rule and the guys picking who they wanted, and Herney was just along for the ride? That's uh, what I will give I, Greg. Well, a, I think uh, this call came Herney. in. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, thanks, Chuck. Um, I know we've been screaming for tight end, but I started seeing a little bit more tight end development and being thrown the ball as a, as a safety valve uh, for Bridgewater in this last game. And, and I saw Thomas that this week. Yeah. I'm hoping we can continue to see that because we definitely could use him. Um, Thanks, Coach. Uh, great call, Chuck. Uh, big shout out to Sarah Taylor. Chin might heal my broken heart of losing Keekly. I hope he can heal this thumb right here as everybody smashes it up. And I give you a thumbs up uh, for this $14.99 super chat. He has been a missile. You know, it's a giant. There's been two really bad things that have happened in the midst of the Marty Herney news. Number one. Uh, Kevin Green has passed away. Rest in peace. Uh, former Panther, WWE or WWF back then. Maybe he was in the WCW. I don't know which one he was in. Um, Kevin Green uh, passed away at like 58 or 52. 58, yeah. Super young, uh, Hall of Famer. And uh, the other bad news was that the Carolina Panthers have been super snubbed when it comes to the Pro Bowl. Neither Jeremy Chin nor Brian Burns made it. Brian Burns has been the most productive defensive end in the league in many um, in many categories, and uh, sacks being one of them. I, I think Hassan Reddick is probably caught up real quick because uh, he's had like two five sack games. But gosh, Jeremy Chin has been a tackling machine. He plays with a motor that is ridiculous. He has made big time plays. He arguably is the defensive rookie of the year, and I think he should have been a pro bowler, both him and Brian Burns from this team. Mm -hmm. So that's the bad news. Um, Greg, what did you want to say about the – Oh, I was just wondering who who, who was poo-pooing on the, uh, the Will Greer pick because I've been – You've been doing tape. research. I've, what did I've, I've I been, say I've about been studying it? tape lately, and I just wanted to know who, who it was that said that. So. Okay. By the way, can I say something about the uh, pro bowl snubs? Yeah. So, listen, uh, if you want to blame someone, don't blame the people that voted. Blame the fucking decision makers in Carolina that decided to bring Teddy Bridgewater's bum ass here to Carolina. Because this offense is so fucking boring because of that quarterback that this team is forgettable to not only fans, but other NFL players as well. Yes. Did Brian Burns get snubbed for the Pro Bowl? Yes. Did Jeremy Chen get snubbed? Yes. And is Jeremy Chen probably going to get snubbed on defensive player or rookie player of the year? Yes. He there's no way is. he's winning that without making the Pro Bowl. It, like, there's no way. He's, I mean, well, he didn't make the Pro Bowl. That's what I'm saying. Without making the Pro Bowl, yeah, there's no yeah, way. Right. He's yeah, win yeah. Win oh, 100%. Year. So, listen, like, this team is boring. This team is an afterthought to fans. Uh, of every team that isn't the Panthers and most other players out there. We're an afterthought. No one thinks about us. That's why this quarterback conversation that we're about to have is fucking important. It is so incredibly important that we grab our quarterback of the future in this draft cycle. 
It has to happen, or your favorite Panthers are going to continue to be snubbed for the Pro Bowl every year. Okay. Um, any? Um, did you guys hear David Tepper say, he said something about one of the reasons that, um, or one of the things he differed or did not like about Herney, is he referenced giving a contract with, like, ultimately suggested that it was Teddy Bridgewater the Teddy Bridgewater contract was too rich for his blood. Did you guys hear this? Well, we we saw how it out, didn't we? So hold on. Tepper said the Teddy Bridgewater tr- contract was. Um, can't can't Here, the, let the me owner read the kind quote of for you. Here, the GM? Let me, let Can he me, say that? I want you to do this and let me read this. the quote for you. Is um. He says, all right, so he was asked about the quarterback uh, class this year. And he said, quote, the, N- uh, the NFL, when you talk about a quarterback and you think about your do- uh, about what you're doing there, it's an ongoing process. It's a question of who can be that, that guy that can help you win. That's the most important position on the field. So, And he says, he goes on to say, um, and unless you have that guy, for sure, that gets you to the playoffs and Super Bowls, you have to keep re- reevaluating that because that's the only thing that matters is Super Bowls. And until you have that guy, you're evaluating, evaluating, evaluating every year. Then he went on to say that, gosh, where is it? I read it today. Oh, he said this. As he goes on to say, Tepper, uh, this is from The Athletic, Joe Person. Tepper used a hypothetical that sounded like an awful lot like Bridgewater. For instance, quote, for instance, you should look at how different people perform at different times in a game. Make sure that you have that understanding before you make a contract with someone. How do they perform in a fourth quarter? Or how do they perform in a two-minute drive? Or how do you perform like that? Make sure that you have some sort of data and those data points which would make sense when you're making the decision as much as how much you think they can throw. That sounds like Teddy Bridgewater, and it sounds a lot like what I've kind of said, or what I've said is this, is it's not even about bringing Teddy Bridgewater in. It's bringing in Teddy Bridgewater with a history of injuries, with a only a five-game sample set, from a very good team with the New Orleans Saints and giving him a three-year deal. Mm -hmm. And I think Teddy Bridgewater would have been fine to bring in on a one-year prove-it contract Mm -hmm. like Cam is having to do in New England. The three-year deal, and I think that that's what he's saying, is that, yeah, it made sense in the COVID time because we had the connection to Joe Brady and this and that, but we committed too much with too little information. Mm. Two two things. One, we know Tepper's lied to us before. He'll true, look you right in your true. face and lie yep. to you and not care. This to me sounds like the exact reason they kept Herney around was for this purpose. If Bridgewater fails, you're our scapegoat because there is no damn way in hell they signed Teddy Bridgewater that six that three year, what, sixty eight million dollar deal without 63, 63. the consent of David Tepper. There is no way in hell he's using him as a scapegoat. We just solved the mystery right there. I, That's why. That's why he was there this year was so, to be the scapegoat in case Bridgewater failed. I disagree. I disagree. And I'll right. tell you how I disagree. Okay. I believe that what ended up having what was the final straw that broke the camel's back in firing Mario Hurry was seeing how bad Teddy Bridgewater has been playing. And that a combination, we all have our theories, right? Who decided Mm -hmm. to bring him here? So David Tepper said, wait a minute. I let this three-way powwow of Matt Rule, Joe Brady, and Marty Herney make a decision on a quarterback who is thoroughly underperforming. Okay, Mm -hmm. so what does that tell me? That he wants a guy in the building that can actually make decisions, that actually has the wherewithal to know what contracts to sign and to be able to, to have the balls to pull the trigger on those kinds of moves and deals. Marty Herney is not that guy. He has never demonstrated the ability to be that. And uh, if you listen to uh, Matt Rule, 
She says that Marty Herney did such a good job at always listening to everyone. And he was like calling me up to five times, even on draft day, to ask me a bunch of questions about what we should do and how we should do it. And all that told me is that we have an, an unassertive GM who doesn't really know what he's doing, who doesn't really have a vision on how to build the Carolina Panthers. And I feel like that's what prompted David Tepper to say, okay, I'm done with this. I'm done with this. We have to have a legitimate, intelligent decision maker in the building. And I think Teddy Bridgewater is what made him realize that he didn't I have think that. Greg's got a good point, though, is to, to, to relinquish, to wash, cleanse, to punch his pilot, David Tepper in this, to cleanse his hands, you know, and wash his hands of this is um, a little too convenient. And that the idea is that both of them probably learned a lesson here. And I don't know how, who both of them is and how, what the lesson is. Is old, I just know this, is that you should have, the, the Teddy Bridgewater bridge is not a terrible plan when you think of, um, Joe Brady, but Joe Brady hasn't played with him. It hasn't been around him in year two, two years mm-hmm. on top of that is that he wasn't half the coach he is at that point. So you're, you're asking Joe Brady for his advice on his first day of the job. Can you make it work with Teddy Bridgewater? Yeah, there is a familiarity that will work and that's understandable. The deal, the real problem is, is the length of the deal. I understand Teddy is agent is fighting against a one year deal, but you got to fight back and maybe two at the most. The three year deal gave Teddy too much. Um, it just showed too much faith in him. Yeah, too much faith in someone that has never proved it. He never proved it when he was with the Minnesota Vikings, and he never proved it with the Saints. Even in five games, I don't care what he did, he was on a much better roster with a much better offensive line. And even still, even then, he was basic. Yeah, yep, exactly. All right, uh, Jason, you got something to say on that, please? Yeah, man. I This is my theory, man. It's kind of a mix between Cody and Greg. Right? So basically, what I think what happened – was at the beginning of the season, uh, Tepper sat um, Marty Herney down and was like, look, bro, you brought this guy in for three years, $63 million. If this don't work out, that's it, bro. That's it. If you don't, if Teddy doesn't work out and if this defense isn't performing like it's supposed to with the amount of weapons that we have, then you got to go. I feel like this was his test to Marty Herney to see if he could be that guy. And he failed that test. And so now he's gone and Tepper can finally find the guy that meshes with him and rule perfectly. Uh, Cody question in the chat room. Is Zach Wilson worth a top five pick? Uh, how many touchdowns uh, does he have in the first half? So, uh, he had five touchdowns in the first half. I believe now he's at uh, six with uh and they just entered the fourth quarter yeah zach wilson listen you you're hearing it here first zach wilson um unless uh justin fields and ohio state go off and uh change his destiny all the people all the talent evaluators on twitter and all the buzz is uh that zach wilson has moved his way firmly into qb number two right behind trevor so it could be trevor goes to whoever has number one uh Jacksonville or the Jets or Carolina more than that in a bit uh and uh Zach Wilson is probably gonna go to number two and Justin Fields might fall a little bit so here's a hot I mean, take question in- for you did Justin yeah. Fields uh playing this season if he had decided to sit out because of COVID has his stock dropped yeah but it's more because of his it, it wouldn't have benefited him to sit out because Trey Lance not being able to play a full season this year has probably lost more than a million dollars. Zach Wilson's going to pass him. Matt Jones might even pass him because idiot general managers like like Amari Herney would fall in love with his passing stats and think that he's wonderful, and he isn't. Um, so, uh, listen, uh, I think Justin Fields is still a top quarterback in this class. Uh 
and I think we would be lucky to have him too. But um, yeah, Zach Wilson. I mean, he's getting Aaron Rodgers uh, uh, comparisons. D- Daniel Jeremiah today on Twitter said that uh, he reminds him of uh, of Aaron Rodgers, and I like that comparison. Similar body type, similar arm talent. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm talking just from a physical mobile, uh, but not insanely fast like you, man. Well, that- he, he actually is pretty fast. He's just not built very thick, so he's fast. You don't want him to take a bunch of damage like Cam. No, did. no, you, you don't want, want to run fly. him like that. You want him to run like Rod, and really, and arguably, you want a quarterback who runs like Rodgers or runs yeah. like Wilson, and maybe what we think Kyler Murray is going to run like, and that is uh, opportunity strikes, occasional design calls, but you have the mobility <laughs> to extend plays. And to, but when that is predicated on such a large part of your game, it doesn't have to be. It's not a bad thing. But I think that Russell Wilson's mobility is ideal. And that is, you're not calling RPOs with him all the, or and stuff like that. It's just he can move around. And if, if it's there, he can make a dash for it. I just saw Luke Wilson run tonight, or Zach Wilson, excuse me, Zach Wilson, and he was fast. But I think it's going to look slower on an NFL field. That's my point. Yeah, too well. Um, well. You know, so it's not that he – and I don't need it to be like Lamar type fast. I just need for him to not be uh, like Big Ben (laughs) is right now. You know what I mean? Is somewhat mobile to where – I I would say Teddy Bridgewater mobility is fine for me. I bet you – no, listen. I bet you Zach Wilson will probably run a faster combine time than uh, guys like uh, Daniel Jones and maybe even Deshaun. Deshaun Deshaun ran a a 4.67, and people would say Deshaun Watson's pretty fast. I'm willing to bet Zach Wilson probably can probably run a low 4.5, and that's – fucking gucci that's all right we're not gonna let the people wait anymore um it is almost 10 o'clock i want uh, first to encourage everybody who's watching to smash the thumbs up button i appreciate everybody in the chat but now Mm -hmm. it is time oh shit all rise court is in session cody lashney tony dunn is the the judge the jury is Panther Nation. Uh, the prosecutor pleading his case for a historic trade, Cody Lasting, and the defense will rest in the hands of the Bat Daddy 52 and Jason Hewitt. All rise. Uh, let me see if I can get Cody on the screen first. Uh, Cody. Uh, please stand up and address the court. Uh, okay, one, you can't make me if you tried. No, uh, two. well, address the court, sir. <laughs> Good oh, point. Sorry, uh, you <laughs> need to. Can you say objection? Objection. I just found the judge in contempt. Th- listen, let the angry handicapped man talk. All right, <laughs> I am here to present to you all what I feel would behoove the Carolina Panthers. You take a drink and for that. I am going to present to you all what I feel would be the kind of trade that would get the number one team, whether it be the Jaguars or the Jets, to move off of the number one pick. So before we go into this, let's get a few things out the way that I want you to understand going into this. You have to give enough in the deal that would get a team that needs a quarterback, a generational quarterback at that, to be able to move off of that pick. You have to give them something that's worth that. So with that said, you're going to hear what what we're going to give up, and you might freak out. But Panther Nation, I ask that you give me the opportunity to try and persuade you. Because what I think is that I've concocted a deal that would be beneficial for both the team that we are trading with and for us. Tony Dunn, if you would, hit me with that next slide, please. Go ahead, sir. All right. The contents of this trade are 
the Jacksonville Jaguars would receive the fourth pick in the 2021 draft and would also receive every pick from the Carolina Panthers 2022 draft and every pick from the Carolina Panthers 2023 draft. In return, the Carolina Panthers are going to have every single pick of their 2021 draft class. (laughs) Every pick in their 2021 draft class and the first overall pick in which we select Trevor Lawrence. Now, hold on. I know your instincts are telling you that's way too much. We get opening statements, right? Your Honor? No, you don't. Everybody no? Oh. shut up and let the handicap man. <laughs> okay. All right. Tony Dunn. The, hit me with that next slide. The jury part and stuff was kind of on the fly. Uh, <laughs> all right. Next time, don't use these Jaguar colored uh, letters. We can't read Difficult it. Difficult to read. Yeah. Well, well, I'm the only one that needs to read it anyway. All right. So, so, so why is this worth it for the Jacksonville Jaguars? Okay. Because, um, go ahead, yes, because I will yeah. not interrupt the <laughs> argument because I do oh, have a Oh, my account. Lord. <laughs> oh, my yeah. Lord. So Here, we're going to give you 40 new players in the next two years. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Argue. Make your point. Make your point. Okay. Let me mute right. myself, man. Tell me, are you the, the judge? Where's order in the order, court, man. The, Come the gallery is out of control. Okay. Follow me here. First, I want to demonstrate why this trade would be worth it for a team that is moving off of this pick. The Jaguars, as a result of this trade, would have 39 draft picks over three years. All of those players will be on rookie contracts with six of them having a fifth-year option. The Jaguars will have north of $77 million uh, of money to spend in 2021. The Jaguars in this draft already have 11 premium draft picks. That would also bring them to 14 picks in 2022 and 14 picks in 2023. On top of that, let's say the Jaguars decide, you know what? We still want a quarterback this year. Because we'll have 72 opportunities to get another one later. Continue. (laughs) Well, so listen, they're going to have an opportunity to draft their quarterback that falls to them at number four, which will either be Wilson or... Uh, or uh, Trey uh, or Trey Lance or yeah. Justin Fields, yeah. or they're going to have enough draft capital to move back up with whoever's in front of them if they wanted to. On top of that, they would have the draft capital to be able to move up in the 2022 draft and the 2023 draft if they want oh. a quarterback in that amount of time. That allows them to build that allows them to build their football team, that allows them to have a bunch of extra money, and that allows them to also have their quarterback of the future. Now listen, I already hear the the the, the chat room. I'm hold sorry. on. Hold on to your hot. Oh my you gotta let us get word in though, right? Hold on. Hold on you to oh no, not yet. Not yet. We're not done. Okay, we've got done. twelve more slides to go through. No, not 12. No, brother. I'm just kidding. Not 12. Not 12. Oh, brother. (laughs) Advance. All right. Advance. Who's the next one? All right. Uh, uh, Some fine print stipulations. Any trades made by Carolina after this deal is done would not be subject to the trade, and Carolina would still be able to enter into the 2022 and 2023 draft. So, for example... If we have a player on a football team that we want to trade for a pick in any of the next year's draft, that's ours. It doesn't go to them. Uh, And on top of that, we still keep any of our compensatory picks for players that we let walk out of the door. Okay? Move forward. Now I'm going to try and sell you all on why this could be worth it for us. Okay. 
Follow me. We're going to have a brand new general manager. Hopefully, one who's pretty competent. One who knows how to evaluate talent. And one who knows how to, ma- who, who knows <laughs> how to navigate the salary cap. Okay? So mm-hmm. let's go through this. Mm-hmm. K1 short saves us $9 million. Uh, yes, that's m- 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 money to that goes towards signing other players. Cutting Matt Paradis, yeah. cutting Matt Paradis would save us five million dollars uh, against the against the cap for uh, a center who has. Hold on, bro. Everyone's gonna have to mute their microphone. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm go laying out my ahead. shit. I'm talking. Go ahead. All right, cutting Robbie Anderson saves eight million dollars. That could be money that goes towards uh, signing either Taylor Moten. Or Curtis Samuel to keep him on this football team. On top of that, cutting Stephen Weatherly saves us five point nine five million against the two thousand twenty one cap. All of this combined takes our estimated cap space from twelve million dollars to just north of forty to uh, forty million dollars. That's over twenty-eight million oh, extra spending dollars oh, over the next two years. Carolina Panthers, and, and this is another point that I want to make. This team is not as far away as people have been saying. The so Carolina why Panthers break it down like this. Uh, 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 Brother. Order, 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 in the, order in the court. Tony, get control, man. Okay. Hey, watch the way you address the judge. Sorry, I apologize. I apologize. Okay. Oh, brother, continue. Oh, okay. Uh, where was I before I was so rudely interrupted? Uh, okay. The Carolina Panthers have lost 13 one score games over the past two years. That is second only to the Chargers, who have had 17. This is a football team that is not far away from being a competitive contender, from being a football team. Listen, it is possible that with a better quarterback on this roster, this might have been a team that made it into the playoffs. Now, I'm not saying we, I'm not saying we, we would have won, but our defense has given us a chance to win so many different times this year, and we didn't have the quarterback to do it. All right, hold on. Let, let's take this even further. Okay, uh, leaving our 2021 draft class intact provides extra motivation for our brand new general manager and his staff to dominate this draft and make sure that this is a Panthers draft class that goes down in history while you are building around your quarterback for the future. Okay, imagine if we had a Jeff Ireland come on this football team and uh, orchestrate the kind of draft that he provided for the New Orleans Saints in 2017. Imagine a starter on the offensive line. Uh, Imagine another starter uh, in in our cornerback field. Uh, We're going to have our our quarterback. We're going to be able to add linebackers. We're going to be able to add through the draft this year with seven picks. Okay? On top of that, if we have success this year and Trevor Lawrence burns it up for us, all of a sudden, even if we don't have draft picks next year, we have, year money, we, we have money to spend and a bunch of free agents are going to look at the Carolina Panthers and see a generationally talented quarterback, a bunch of young players on defense, like Jeremy Chen, like Brown, that's only a few extra pieces away. And all of a sudden, you know what? If you're a, a player that's looking to win a Super Bowl, Panthers are in a bad spot. Panthers might be somewhere where you can go to win a Super Bowl. On top of this, you have money to pay Taylor Moten. And I'm telling you, 14 picks sounds like a lot, but two years goes by so fast. Kyler no. Murray has been in the NFL two years now. Josh Allen has been in the NFL for three years now. We don't follow those teams. That's why it doesn't seem that long. It, it, well, okay, that's fine. <laughs> you know. Two years, 
two years goes by fast. Okay. okay? Can, can I rebuttal before you go to your next no. slide? You got you. Go, oh, come on, man! You got to give us some I time. I only have I only have three more slides, man. Okay, okay. I'm taking notes. Move it along, uh, counselor. Move ahead. it along. Okay, this makes business sense, and it makes cultural sense. Okay, I'm here oh, to tell you God. that David Tepper and the Carolina Panthers just spent one billion dollars. On a state of the art training facility in Rock Hill, South Carolina. <laughs> now, you're going to build a, a state of the art facility in Carolinas or in, in South Carolina. Don't you think it would behoove, behoove you to have the most popular football player in the Southeast? I don't know what y'all are thinking, but I guarantee you a star quarterback like Trevor Lawrence playing for the hometown Carolina Panthers team, that's going to get asses to come to the facilities, to buy money, to spend, to do all the shit that David Tepper wants people to do, and more importantly, to put asses in Bank of America Stadium. Tony, hit me with the next slide. We're connecting our histories here, folks. Now, what I'm here to tell you is that the Carolina Panthers started their history in Death Valley, South Carolina, in Clemson. Okay? You are connecting our histories together by drafting one player. <laughs> by drafting one player, you are tethering the history of the Carolina Panthers. What Dennis Daly most- could not do. Oh, sorry. You, well, well the, you are tying our history to what is the most dominant football team in the Carolinas that has a built-in culture that is continuously putting players into the NFL, okay? It's a part of our history. Move it along, counselor. Hit me with the next slide. (laughs) On top of all of this, on top of all of this, and I feel this is what oh, all of you, we... this is what all of you uh, who who are disagreeing with me are lost on, and I don't blame you because I am a Clemson fan. So I have watched every single snap that Trevor Lawrence has ever made in college football. But Tony Dunn, if you would play that video clip for me while I'm telling you about this man that the Panthers would be drafting to be their star quarterback for the next. 10 years plus. Okay. It is going now. They do. They were likely to go to Guys, since Trevor Lawrence has stepped foot on a football field as a college football player, he has been the best quarterback in college football. There has not been another quarterback like this man since the likes of Andrew Luck and John Elway, and I rate him even higher because he has a better arm talent. He's far more mobile. The amount of information that he processes at the line of scrimmage is second to none. He is able to put the football in the end zone from damn near any spot on the football field. He is in control of the offense at all times. He is a generational football talent that does not come along uh, only but, what, once a decade? There have been other good players that that have come through the draft, but none of them have ranked as a prospect anywhere close to what Trevor Lawrence does and what he has continued to do. Panther Nation, I know that seems like so much, but we would have money to spend in both of those two years. We would be a free agent destination for all players to want to come here and win the Super Bowl. Pumps. On top Down of that, for we have a generational talent to hit ourselves to Lawrence is for the go next to the end zone. decade plus. Caught. I'm telling Touchdown. you, it's a lot. Trevor it's Lawrence. hard to do, but there is a way 
to navigate that deal and make it work out for absolutely everyone involved. Am I a crazy motherfucker? You are a crazy motherfucker. You are a crazy motherfucker. I promise. Oh my god. This deal would be Would cripple the team. Can I? Oh, Your yeah, Your Honor. Your Honor. Your Honor. The prosecutor. All right. Uh, everybody in the mm. chat room, two settle words. down. Two uh, words. The Good. gallery, Good. the Go gallery needs to settle down. Before everyone goes, oh, do I have to your case? Before everyone goes, do I have permission to be seated? Yes. <laughs> Do you rest your case? Yes, bro. Do you rest your case? You rested your case. All right. I will now All right, uh, before... give, um, I'll turn to the defense counselor for reality. To the defense counselor <laughs> for, um, against this, whatever it is, argument. Go ahead, Jason. We'll open if you open the floor. Okay. I'll, I'll start off. That was a wonderful presentation. Thanks. Your points were fabulous. Well, the way you presented your points were fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. Br brother. Brother. Okay. Brother. Talk to Two me. words. Two words. For, for, for Trevor Lawrence. Andrew Luck. Uh -huh. Not playing anymore, is he? Do you, know what Do you know what happened to Andrew Luck over his career? Are you what happened to Andrew Luck? He didn't win nothing. Yes, this is the question. Okay, so this is a question. Okay, if I can respond. So what Andrew Luck did was the next four or five years take a dumpster mm -hmm. fire coaching staff and a dumpster fire front office and a dumpster fire offensive line and gave them what? Something like five consecutive seasons of 10 plus wins? Yeah, that is what Andrew Luck did. Weren't they only one season removed from Peyton Manning, who they had one had consecutive winning seasons before that? How was it? A, how was it a dumpster fire front office and a dumpster fire coaching staff? One season removed from having Peyton. What he said he left. Right, but th they didn't change the entire staff the year Peyton Manning left. The entire everything. I mean, come on, I'm just answering Jason's question. Jason asked me what did Andrew yeah. Luck do, and the point that you made is proven. Andrew Luck did not win a Super Bowl. But mm -hmm. what order I, in the but, court. But I, order in the court. Order in the court. Uh, Mr. Hewitt, it's best to address uh, the jury and uh, don't let, let's not pose questions. Let's uh, let's give them answers. Fair, fair. Okay, so basically, Andrew Luck didn't have an O line, and so he faced punishment. Similar to a guy that I'm sure that all Panthers fans are familiar with and Cam Newton. I know Trevor Lawrence is your boy, right? Clemson, fabulous quarterback. One of the greatest quarterbacks in college football history. Do you really want to see him go through that level of punishment year after year after year? Because sure, you can go to free agency and get an O-lineman. But this past year, we thought, oh, okay, they got Ocon. They got um, Shofi or whatever. They got John Miller. They got all these guys through free agency with the cap that they have. And how does that O-line look right now? Well, the O-line has it's looked... Marty Herney's fault, right? Well, the, the O-line, the past few <laughs> games, uh, I mean, maybe not Green Bay, but the past few games has looked much better than they had at the start of this year. Uh, more importantly, I also know that that same team, the Indianapolis Colts, had a terrible offensive line, had one draft where they drafted two offensive linemen, which, by the way, we could do this year under the stipulations of my pick because we still have all of our draft picks this year. We could draft a center and a left tackle, and all of a sudden that might be everything we need to turn our offensive line around. They were they, – Order in the court. For... Order in the court. Nope. Cody, the prosecutor has had the microphone long enough. Jason, I ask you to present a case why this is a bad idea. You tell us why the prosecute why Panther Nation should vote against mortgaging two full entire drafts for Trevor Lawrence. Make your points because, uh, mm -hmm. in a way that does not give the mic back to the prosecutor. <laughs> Fair enough. So basically, the thing is, you have. Any functioning NFL team 
has to build in some way through the draft. Mm -hmm. You cannot straight up depend on free agency for two consecutive years. And then you think about the salary cap. Well, the Panthers are already in cap hell as it is. Can you imagine what would happen if you don't have a draft for two consecutive years? Yes. There is no Jeremy Chin. There is no, well, you can't get a Derrick Brown for the next year. I mean, my case is, you know, I, I think there's a better way of getting Lawrence, but we're okay. arguing all against right. your point. Right all now. right, defense, tell us is this is, all right, Greg, I'm going to give the, uh, please address the court on uh, in your reaction uh, to the prosecutor's yeah, case. Court, I will make my argument based on the argument that Cody made. Very, very strong argument. I like the presentation. Look good. Uh, you're one to cut KK Short, Paradis, Anderson, Weatherly. So first of all, you're wanting to strip talent from this team to get a player that is the best quarterback in the draft, but is not that much better than the other options we can get. I mean, a quarterback can only do so much. It doesn't matter how good the quarterback is. If he doesn't have weapons, you strip everything away from him. He's not going to do well, okay? You, you said earlier, we're not far. We're, only, we're maybe a quarterback away from being a team that's a playoff contender team. Then why strip the team down? Why not draft one of these quarterbacks, Justin Fields, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, one of these guys who's going to be a good quarterback? I can almost guarantee you, because we can't guarantee uh, Lawrence is either. I guarantee you one of them, they're, they're going to be decent quarterbacks, better in Bridgewater. And if we're only a quarterback away, like you were saying, then one of those guys works just fine. We keep all our draft capital. Don't have to worry about trade anything. Uh, you can't fix the if, if you were to go with your, tra your your proposal, we cannot fix every position we have just this year in the draft, especially if we get rid of the players you're talking about cutting. We, we, we can't fill in those holes just this year with six other picks. It just, just can't happen. A lot of your premise was on if, if, if. Look, Everybody thought Jamarcus Thank Russell you. was going to be great. Everybody thought Ryan Leaf was going to yes. be great. There are so many players that have come through. Josh Rosen, uh, that people thought were going to be great. They are NFL ready, they're ready to go. And sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. I've heard some people talk about how uh, uh, Will Greer is a premium quarterback and probably the best option, mm -hmm. third on his board, best we could do. You know, great. Pick. Oh, 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 and, oh, and, and, oh, and, oh, and objection, now we feel objection. I will um, not hear that Will Greer is a premium quarterback in this I'm court. Just, I've heard people say it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, look, look also, also <laughs> Carolina is not a choice for free agents to come here. Okay. Thank if you. You're, Thank if you. you're telling me Thank in 2015 you. when Cam Newton, who's the hottest quarterback in the NFL, takes a team 15 and one of the Super Bowl with Ted Ginn as his biggest wide receiver. If we're a big free agency place, as soon as the market opens, those big free agent wide receivers, whoever wants to come to Carolina to be a part of that. But you know what? They can't make mm -hmm. the money here. They can't everywhere else. You're going to get two national games, no national commercials. And I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but the players consider that kind of stuff. Carolina is not a free agent market. It's just not part of it. Uh, hold on. I'm almost done with the notes here. Uh, the $1 billion that, that, that Tepper built for the thing has nothing to do with Trevor Lawrence. Nothing to do at with Trevor all. Lawrence at all. He did that. If Trevor Lawrence is coming out of college or not, Trevor Lawrence could drop dead tomorrow, and he was still going to do that. So that has nothing to do with that. Uh, history, bringing the history together is great. But once again, not really. I, I'm, I'm going for the better pick rather than bringing the history of Clemson and Carolina together. And uh, you got to remember, right now Trevor Lawrence is, I'm not denying it, the best quarterback in the NFL, in, in, the, in the college football. And I think he's going to be good. I really do. But he is playing with top level talent against this college players. 150 college players on a team, 10 of them may make the NFL, four of them may start for more than three years. Okay. That's the averages across college. So when you have the top level talent on your side and you're playing against not top level talent, of course you're going to look fantastic if you're good. So I'm not saying he's going to be a bust. I'm just saying it is not worth it to give up the amount of capital. Now, I'm, I'm willing to do a trade for him. It's not worth it to give up the amount of capital that you're talking about for when we can get a player who's almost as good that can at least get that much done for us with the players we have. And okay. It's, just, it's not worth it. Your Honor, may, may, I, may I speak here? May I, may I, may I retort, please? Uh, the uh, one, the, 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 the judge has a few yeah. remarks to make. Um, okay, Judge. One, as I do think, is this is I don't think whether or not Carolina 
is or isn't a free agent destination is as big of an argument as people want to make it to be because it isn't a destination when the team does not have any money. And right. that sure. is why yep. we have not been able uh, to acquire free agents is not because of a lack of uh, wanting people wanting to come and play with certain players or some attraction. Certainly the market itself does not attract a free agent, but what does attract free agents is cash money. So if you can or can't pay them is arguably the true determinant, I believe, of that. I have one question uh, that the court needs clarification upon. Has the okay. prosecution considered any of the ramifications of shrinking cap size in relation to the reduced revenues for the NFL? So, yes, that is a tremendous question. Um, as of right now, uh, I am hearing that they're not actually expecting the cap space to fall as much as they previously thought that it would. So it's still kind of up in the air, uh, but that is a, a great concern. I want to uh, speak, if I can, to a few of the points that Greg made. Okay, so number one, um, tr let's let's get this clear. Trevor Lawrence is not just a little bit better than the next few guys. Look, okay, no, and, I, and I like Zach Wilson. You're talking about the difference no, 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 of 5,000 no, no, yards no, 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 and 50 no, touchdowns to 4,000 yards and 40. No other quarterback in this draft has done what Trevor Lawrence has done year after year after I'm year, mm -hmm. literally since the man was a freshman in high school. Mm -hmm. There has never been a time in his uh, time in his time playing football where the end of his season didn't end in going to a championship. You heard me right. Every year in high school, he went to a championship. And so far, every year at Clemson, he has been to a championship. The man is a uh, winner. Uh, obje on objection the from the judge. Um, uh, I call for opportunity to pose a hypothetical. Sure. If if Trevor Lawrence came to the Carolina Panthers, do you see his first time in his career of not going to the championship in the first year? Probably so. <laughs> okay. All right. Continue. I'll bet my next year's uh, 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 <laughs> I say probably so, but I, I tell you what, uh, I also would not be – it would not shock me at all. And I'm not just saying this as a biased fan. It would not shock me at all if Trevor Lawrence comes to this team and provides a spark that everyone is just not expecting. He is that kind of quarterback. A quarterback can only, only do so much. Uh, uh, yes, another the thing. defense uh, uh, has something mm -hmm. to say. Go to Jason, please. So this whole – so you said Trevor Lawrence is a winner, but – I can attest to this same since I grew up in Georgia. Cartersville High School, where he went, that is a fantastic football program. And as of right now, they're currently 14 and one. Okay. So it's, I mean, not to say that, you know, Trevor Lawrence isn't this amazing talent because he is. But let's keep it real now. Cartersville is pretty much the Clemson of Georgia high school football. Right. So it's not like he, he was kind of blessed in a sense. I mean, yes, he is. An amazing talent and everything. And but everywhere like he went, girl. he was surrounded by amazing talent and great coaches. At Carolina, I mean, you have some here and there, but it's not going to be the same, man. The run will end, it's sir. The, the run to the championship every year of his life would end. The first year he will it end. It will end immediately. The first year it goes to the NFL. The Go ahead, Cody. Make your final point on your rebuttal. I have another clarification question. So my to further upon my my rebuttal, one we're not going to just erase a, a bunch of talent that is really contributing to the Carolina Panthers. K1 Short is gone, and anyone who thinks different is uh, sniffing bath salts. Okay, mm -hmm. Stephen Weatherly doesn't mean a damn thing to this football team. And hey, listen, you know if we're really hurting for money, I could have went in there. And we could save money by cutting Shaq Thompson too. Now we're not going to do that because that leaves more us, talent that, away. That, 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 we're not going to do that because <laughs> that leaves us with no one at the linebacker position. But what yeah. I will say is this: think about how many players uh, from from last year and this year we would have on rookie contracts. We would have the fifth year option on Trevor Lawrence. 
We're going to have a fifth-year option on Derrick Brown and seven more players to bolster this team with. Another with, with thing, uh, no, hold on. Options, another, not thing, options. another thing that you're not thinking about is that uh, all the uh, we're literally going to have our pick of the litter, pretty much of all the undrafted free agents when we don't have a draft class. <laughs> oh, is, hold gonna, up, man. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, now I'm, I'm sold. sold. I'm gonna close now I'm so. sold is that we get any undrafted free agent we want. Andrew um, Norwell. I think there Andrew are, Norwell. I have uh, some continued... Uh, give, the, give the one out of the thousand example, and yes, you're right. It sounds good. Look, can I have, can I, can I have a closing statement here? Yes. And I'll, I'll, I'll be done. Uh Cody, I, 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 like I said, I like your your argument here. It's it's a great debate, but I think that what you are overlooking is the is the um, salary cap, and I think that you know arguing as to be a GM, it's a big part of the uh, of the GM is a salary cap. I get that you know you got Derek Brown that's coming on his his four. Uh, he's going to be four years ne- coming up next year. If you draft a Trevor Lawrence, you got five years before you got to worry about him. Well, guess what? We draft every year. So our first round pick we draft every year, that option goes down once more. So very soon we're going to have to sign DJ Moore. Very soon we're going to have to sign Brian Burns. Like so if you're giving away all the if you're giving away all this draft capital, it's much 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 more expensive to sign a free agent than it is to sign a rookie. Okay? And two It's impossible to load and, the and, roster with just with just free with agents, just and, free and two, agents. just because and it there's not a free agent out there, agents, just because there's a free agent out there, and you have the money, does not mean they will come to you. And it, if and you it doesn't mean that you, you will play them, not, they're going to play will, them. You have the right to them. So. You will so, not, you will also, not, you will not have the money to attract free agents because you're going to have to spend your entire pool of free agent money padding the roster with so, with average guys. And on top yeah. of that, the one because other thing is fifth year Lawrence. extensions. Yeah. Fifth year extensions are not cheap either. Mm-hmm. They're not mm-hmm. the they, most expensive retro option, ball. but they yeah. are not cheap. And so what you have to go ahead and say is goodbye to Brian Burns after that. Goodbye mm-hmm. to these players. DJ and then mm-hmm. at the same yep. time that they're leaving, guess what? You're missing the opportunity you you're not getting any it's uh, all the money is going out of the business and no f- cash flow coming into the business mm-hmm. my final question for this prosecutor here in this argument is i think one is that please people in the chat room and listening to the podcast know that there's one premise that this whole discussion was made on and that is how do you move a top team, a, a team who yeah. needs the player that you want. Because what I would, my first question to Cody is to clarify this is if Trevor Lawrence is worth two drafts to us, right? Mm-hmm. Why would a team not take him and just keep their drafts going forward? That's my point on why it's worth it to us. Because let me ask you this. If if any of you are the general manager for the Jacksonville Jaguars and, to, and, and I come to you and I present to you this deal, what would you prefer? This oh. or, or, or what did I say? 39? draft picks over oh. the net over the next three years and they still get the ability to to choose their quarterback what Cody. do you think they would do take this deal or take trevor i would take that deal in a heartbeat do you know why because i in am straight up, i am straight up raping you okay guess what cody if you don't make that deal then guess what carolina has that option to pick that quarterback and have those 39 draft picks so what and you're doing is you're taking the all the bounty you're taking gate all that that's going to be on Trevor Lawrence and just giving it to somebody. All the division has player. to do. All the division. The Saints, as soon as they play the Carolina Panthers with Trevor Lawrence, he's gonna. They're gonna tear his head off and his knees off. Bounty yeah. gate comes. He might and, actually die. That yeah, would be really and because sad. How, yeah. you know what is because they're involved. like you know what we don't <laughs> we got a three team division, but Cody, for the, the next four years. 
Cody, the fact that you say that Jacksonville would take that, you're absolutely right. You know why? Because you should take that. You know why? Because that's you what we have. No, 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 that's no, what we no, have. No, no, we have the ability to draft that quarterback, build no, a franchise, and have no, 39 picks. Like I would Tony give that away said, for one so player. Like what Tony said, the, the, the whole premise This is a thought experiment. This was entirely a thought experiment. It's a whole. It's a thought experiment. But I disagree with you guys. I think if uh, if you're the Jacksonville Jaguars or the New York Jets who both need a quarterback, that even with that deal, I don't think they would take it. I don't. I really don't think they would take it. I think Trevor Lawrence means that much in the minds of that many talent evaluators. And listen, I know the deal is thin. I know that it's it, it, it leaves us barren for two years. But what I'm telling you is this: two years in the desert. <gasps> on the other end Can of that, we just go forty days, days, bro? Glory I feel like two years is a long time. Glory beyond your wildest imagination. Glory Maybe. beyond your wildest. Uh, th- th- listen, imagine listen, this with is me a, for a moment. This is a, not a, what is it? Um, uh, Arabian Nights. This is tale listen, out of Arabian Nights, right here. Ima- <laughs> listen, imagine for me. Just let your mind slip away for a second. And imagine a scenario where the Panthers actually have a legendary draft this year. Let's say we get a franchise left tackle. Let's say we get a badass new guard. Let's say we find a steal at cornerback in the, in the, in the second round. Hey, man, but all, all of you are making hypotheticals, brother. Yeah, all of, yeah all that's a little too brothers. much. Is Who cares if, 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 no, that's, it's not going to happen. Right. Is there's going to be a lot injury. of it. Go right. 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 It requires a vision. No, it requires, it requires a vision. And it's 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 about just being the, motivated. The being motivated does not make you draft better. Period. Point Thank blank. You. I can be motivated to, to do really well. It does not mean that I'm going to make a better selection on a draft pick. Period. Because I go, but I make my draft pick based on what I think the statistics are, who I think the guy is. Me being motivated to do well is not going to change that pick. Okay. So being motivated doesn't matter. Right, man. I, I would maintain. All right, uh, I got a question. Uh, my question is this: Is can we try to recenter this discussion on this? Is that this is not going to happen? All right, it's yes, not going to. I know this. I know this no. is not going to happen. Okay, so <laughs> let's refocus yeah. the cut. Co- now that we have gone through our trip through Fairyland. Greg, yeah. if you got to go, just drop out, brother, whenever you got to go. I, actually, I was just going to say, whenever we got done with this conversation, I was going to go, but if it's a good yeah. time right now, so can right, I go Greg. ahead and pop out? Yeah, man. You have a good night. Follow the Bat Daddy 52 Man of Many Podcasts. Um, very much. All right, Cody, all right Jason, so, uh, Jason and, and Cody, I want to find the it, – it's kind of hard to find a median when you're on acid. Because that's what this, this is so far out. Can I get a little and bit here of is, I'm going to say no. Is that. that, look, is that I think this, I think it's uh, nice that you believe Trevor Lawrence is this good of a player. I, I hope he turns out to be this. But even the most generational talents in the history of football, who are they at quarterback, have only amounted to so much victory. Right, I mean, just think about it. The John Elways, the Peyton Mannings. Even with those guys, the ceiling of their success was not, it was was still, this is t- so much risk. Yes, a reward is there. And the reward may be um, reasonable. But there's too much risk for the bet to pay off. There are too and, many and- things that have to go um perfectly and um and one of the and one of those just has to do with Trevor Lawrence and him working out and injury is a thing right now i mean we look at what joe look at joe burrow is is that this is that's where the gambling part is a little right. too risky here now though the panthers have moved over the last couple of days from a um a position that seemingly was outside the top five to potentially striking at a top three pick four at the worst. It seems like. Right now it seems like it's gonna be the Jags, 
the Jets or the Jets, the Jags. I don't know how they're going to figure it out. Then you're going to be talking about the Bengals unless they can pull off another win and then the Panthers. So right now you have one, two teams that are quarterback hungry in front of you, one team that isn't. So what I would ask you, and I, um, maybe, what let's can we talk about another opportunity, is say the Jags and Trevor Lawrence are off the table. Is there a pick and trade opportunity with the Jags that ultimately moves you into second? And what I mean by that is the Jags get whoever is picked at first. I don't know how to tell you how to say what I'm saying is this. Is no, if, I know what you're saying. Like, what no, is the saying. If, if the Jets had number two, what are the chances that we would get them to move off in number two for us to move up and get Zach Wilson? And that's what I wanted to tell everyone. That any trade that you're going to make to move up, which, by the way, that's why I know this isn't going to happen because it's just going to require so much. I still maintain it's worth it. I knew that going into this that people would disagree with me. But whatever. L- listen, you have to understand the Jets and the Jaguars both are in desperate need of a quarterback. You might say, oh, Sam Darnold, they might run with him. And, yeah, sure, they might. But you're still looking at an opportunity for them to get younger and cheaper with a different quarterback. So at the end of the day, yeah, if you're going to trade up, you have to offer a shitload of of, of of picks of of something they're just not going to come off of it is there a need jason if you see trevor lawrence go zach wilson mm-hmm. go do you sit and see if fields falls to you or do you try to strike a deal with cincinnati to flip-flop picks so a team like dallas team like um i don't know who else uh the the patriots can't zip in there a lot of capital for a team to move up to a third pick i think you sit tight and you look for your guy there i just don't know i don't understand um what do you think is going to happen then if lawrence is off is the undisputed um number one pick where do the panthers go at this point and do they have many options or is it quarterback or bust i mean that's a great question i'm Listen, man, it's really difficult because that number two pick, you could either go, wait, are you saying that, are you assuming that they make that trade or are you assuming that they're- No, no, I don't think, yeah, I don't even know if you really, how you're going to move ahead of the Jets at that point. Yeah, so let's- You know, I mean, I don't think, I think they take Fields or Wilson- and then the Bengals mm-hmm. go, and you're only worried about someone's flopping with the Bengals, but to leapfrog us. That's the only fear. Well, if they're in that position, I would. Ooh, I don't think I we're going to gonna move. Up. I don't think we need to move up. Is that I think I don't if, think if Fields either, falls honestly. to us, if Wilson falls to us at th- at four, there is an outside chance we're picking three anyway. Exactly. And so the thing is, see, there's three Nate. So Zach Wilson, I feel like he really swayed me tonight. So he's definitely up there. It's between him, Justin Fields, and Panay Sewell, who is at uh, Oregon left tackle. I love that dude, man. If he's available, it – oh, bro. Can you imagine repaying Moton or Moton? as well as having Sewell on the other side. You know how amazing that O-line could potentially be within the next two, three years? And quarterbacks, you can always find a quarterback in a draft. I'm sorry. I'm not saying that, you know, they'll have the opportunity again, but they could always trade up. There's definitely, I feel like, elements within the team that they could trade to move up in a draft in the future. But I got to watch the combine, man. I feel like that is going to be, like, the ultimate factor that makes me make that decision. I just think that the Panthers aren't going to have too many opportunities to grab a quarterback like this. This year they will. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Pene Sewell still represents uh, problems. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next cat call. 
Okay, guys, this is my last call. This is Chuck from Elizabeth City. Oh, uh, I kind of want to also go over the fact that we kind of won this weekend, moving up to the fourth spot. We can't get one. We can't get two. Trevor Lawrence might be too much of a of a spin, even if we're at number four. Um, I did not. I was not impressed with Justin Fields, and the more I look at it, if I'm giving him or Zach Wilson, I, I really roll with Zach Wilson. But Justin Fields might be there. The way I'm starting to see second pick is starting to look like Zach Wilson is gaining ground ahead of Justin Fields. And I think we know that Cincinnati, if they stay at number three, that's the only spot we can get. And I just don't see the Bengals maybe winning one more game if we're lucky and we need them to, to, to win two more. I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, I think they'll take that offensive tackle from um, from Oregon. Um, but we probably can get Zach Wilson, hopefully. Hopefully it won't be Justin Fields, but we can definitely get a, a great quarterback. Um, as long as something doesn't go haywire wrong and we win one of these last two. And like I said, I, I want to be competitive against Washington. Same thing with New Orleans. But we just need to come up short. Just don't take Bridgewater out because he's he's proven that the, the guy is, is a, a thorn in our side when it comes to this. Um, but I think we need to start turning our, our, our eyes towards the draft and looking at what we can get a quarterback, some offensive line help. I think we can get the linebacker through free agency. Um, and we definitely have to have another corner, and, and that's probably going to have to be through the draft as well. Maybe we draft the tight end late, um, but we got to sign a couple of our guys. But I just want to know what you guys are thinking about, what you guys thought, because right now I'm looking at this, and we, we definitely have got to hold on to this pick at number four and try not to win one of these last two, um, although I'd like to win. I'm kind of seeing it like Cody does now. We need to lose out to go ahead and get this pick. Yeah, the doors are opening right for now for us to get a guy, right? And uh, and I don't know who that guy is. If it is Zach Wilson, who seems to be gaining a lot of steam in draft communities and people on this podcast, um, but also there, I mean, and he's been lights out. But there's some questions: is that how is he flashing the pan, flashing the pan a little bit? The idea that Justin Fields could be your opportunity is a big time deal and you got to take it if you're there, but there's some other opportunities. And if you're the Carolina Panthers and you are picking at four and you pick the Penne Sewell guy and you got a little capital, if you're, if, if Cody Lashney is willing to trade away two draft entire drafts for Trevor Lawrence, Hey, maybe we should move a second and a third pick to move back into the first to get uh, a quarterback on the back end if you think he is something that could be the answer there. Um, so, yes, is that in this, once we got hit the top five, the quarterback becomes a real discussion. That's it. Is that uh, three weeks ago we didn't think we were going to be able to crack seven? So, yeah, and here we are. All right. Go ahead, Jason. What were you saying? Oh, I thought you had something to say. All right, we're well, here. Yeah. This this next call no. is for you, Cody, since you're back. No. No. No, Cody. No. Oh, yeah. No. Hell <laughs> the fuck no. No, 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 no. No! 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 It's like the dog just peed on the carpet. All right, next call. Cover yeah, me, honestly, Cody. the best scenario is fucking bring Cam back. He ain't going back to New England. And bring him back. Repair that relationship. Do you know these motherfuckers didn't even give this man a farewell video, but they gave Graham to no one? Do you know how fucking disrespectful that is? That is just insult. The, the insult. You gave... Graham Gano, a farewell video, and then you go ahead and give Teddy Bridgewater a $63 million fucking contract, a three-year contract? Are you fucking playing with my emotions? That's why Marty Herney got his ass fucking fired. And I'm telling you right now, from what I just heard from David Tepper, bro, cut loose, cut bait, whatever you got to do with Teddy Bridgewater, bring Cam back, and I would still go after Justin Fields. Oh, let him just give Cam a two-year deal? 
A two-year deal, cheap deal. Trust me, I promise you, Cam will come back on a two-year deal with all the weapons we have. And then still drive Justin Fields and let him... <laughs> oh, my God. Bruh. You're not coming back. Bruh, all right, all right. That's just a dream scenario for me. Hey, fellas, you know who the fuck this I'm is. Back. Hey, hey, hey. I'm back, baby. Let's go. Gee, baby, bringing the heat, man. Yes, sir. I appreciate uh, the enthusiasm. Yeah, That's not G- happening, buddy. Hey, G- G- baby's no, the bro. Man. And yeah, Jason That's the homie, man. It's not happening, man. Not happening, Look, bro. I, I, love Cam, I love Cam Cam Newton reinvigorated my love for football. Uh, I love Cam Newton. Cam is not coming back. Uh, it, it's just, it's not going to happen. Yeah, There's man. no way that our ownership is going to. You said it yourself, G baby. They didn't even give him a fucking send off video. If they wouldn't give him a send off video, what makes you think that they're going to sign Cam's going to be a Patriot yeah, after again? After throwing after throwing five touchdowns and what like. 11 interceptions or something crazy, which, by the way, I'm not blaming all on Cam. I'm also not taking the blame off of Cam. It is what it is. That's a bad fucking football team up there in New England. I want to say something real quick, okay? I knew coming into this episode that I was facing an uphill battle, an uphill battle, okay? But I'm one fearless fucking cripple, and I knew this because I had, I put this out on Twitter, and uh, people voted on it. And uh, over 230 people voted uh, in my Twitter poll. And, like, it was 60-something percent no to uh, 30-something percent that were down to draft Trevor and do it to to move up for it. Um, But you're right, Tony. When when you say that it was kind of a thought experiment, like, part of what I'm saying is, is, one, that would be what it takes to move up. Well, when we pose this question, is that we didn't spot. pose the question to Cody, but we're always talking in the DMs and after the show yeah. and over podcasts. And the one thing that I continued to say to him and to the guys in the chat is if Trevor mm-hmm. Lawrence is this good, because the first scenario was just give away one draft, right? Like that was like, it's like give away our first round pick this year and all of next year's draft to move off. And my, my question, the thing that I still don't think that that makes that possible. And I think the deal is super sweet with two years of draft picks. I think that one is the one you got to maybe take, but is that you, if he's this good, if he's as good as you say, you shouldn't move off of him for anything. Despite getting 39 picks or whatever, is that, look, the Jaguars have already got, like, all these loaded picks. And when they get, all of a sudden, they get Trevor Lawrence and the Jags are going to be in contention, man. You're going to get a, they're not bad. They're not awful from top to bottom. They've stripped all those stupid parts to them that are problematic. Uh, It would be worse for him to go to the Jets than it would for him to go to the Jags at this point, except for the fan base. Uh, but that was the question I continued to pose to Cody was, is like, why I don't get like, give me two first, give me the first rounds for the next five years. And I'm still, if I think he's this good, I'm not moving off of him. My question at the end of this though, comes back to this is if I go to a short Gordon Ramsay or his restaurant in Las Vegas or wherever, and he's my favorite chef. And I believe that he cooks the best, the absolute best steak, right, Mm -hmm. that you can get, which is what Trevor Lawrence in this analogy is. Is there ever a point where that steak is just inherently too costly to equal its value? And I think that that's where we're at on the precipice of this, Cody, is that I don't know if it's really even reasonable to think that you can run an organization without a, that many draft picks for that long. I hear I just you. think I it's hard. I, I just don't know if it's possible. It's unprecedented. <laughs> a number one, it's unprecedented yeah. is that yeah. uh, I think the saints gave away a full draft for Ricky Williams. Yeah. Which is bad shit. That's insane. At least mine is for a generational talent awesome, at though. the quarterback position. I know. But by the way, by the way, uh, you know, talking about this this whole thing, 
let me let me pose this to you. Does this conversation change a lot more if it's one year? Do you do you think this is a better deal if same thing? Our draft in 2021 is entirely the same because if it's the Jets, they already have 11 picks that they earned that are all premium high-end picks. Yeah, and I think so. After the way you presented the case to me tonight, I would say, yes, it has changed my opinion on one. Because now, in thinking about it is, even if you gave, say, nine picks, and or say, say there's seven picks that are given up, um over one two well what would it be over two years you would say like 12 picks right the best you're gonna do is that i know it's a lot i know it's a lot but let's just say four of those picks are meaningless right the back end picks are not so it's like eight picks yes that and the four out of eight of those are very important right 50 percent of those are very important the next two picks are probably uh, mar- uh, media, moderately important, and the final two picks are like marginally important. My point that is being is this, is that, and then you have to factor in that there's going to be misses in those picks. So yeah. you're going to miss on, say, a third of them at the best. So you're really then at the end of the day only giving up like six picks, it feels like. So, yes, is that in one way you can look at it like that. And another way is that I think that with one year, yeah, I got no problem with it for one year. In fact, I almost think that giving away a full draft next, what would be worse, Jason, to give away all of next year's draft or to give up Mm -hmm. three consecutive first round picks? Well, see, that was actually my trade. My trade, let me pull it up here, man. So basically, what I would consider is giving up, uh, let's see, 2021, 2022, and 2023. First rounders. They can have that. I'm cool with that. Considering that this team is a quarterback away from being a playoff team, a generational quarterback away from being a playoff team, I do that. That's fine with me. I'd even throw in maybe like a Shaq Thompson or somebody like that who's high end, but you know their production is you know so so right. So I mean, it would be worth that. But if you're talking about building a future, I wouldn't cut off years of entire drafts. That that was my whole thing. If you're trying to build something, you got to have something that continues to come in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, you got to have, look, at the end of the day, as I learned this, very a, a very important business lesson when I tried to op- when I tried to build Carolina Cat Chronicles and thinking that it was somehow going to be mm-hmm. more than a hobby or somehow going to be more than, uh, that's why we shifted to the podcast because ultimately is this mm-hmm. is, I'm, I'm going to tell you this is business lesson number one. And uh, I will, uh, if if Kevin Gray's still in the chat, man, that's my homeboy from back in the day, uh, and still my homeboy, is I would trust him to help me build a business. I would would trust him in a second. But Business 101 is that you got to have a revenue stream, man. You know, you just have to have money coming in. Even if more money is going out than it's coming in, is that you have to have some cash to operate with or else what you are operating yes, with Thank is you. just more investment money, just more investment money. You just have to pull more money out of your pocket, more mm-hmm. money out of your pocket that way. So you do need a revenue stream. Um, it's an interesting idea is I almost wonder this is, um, is any of it worth any of it? And that is a lot of people in the chat room are saying this is you're so look, it's a top heavy draft. Yes. Trevor Lawrence is, um, this kind of supposed transcendent talent, but we've also heard about these talents before, and they haven't done uh, what they've lived. Up. Andrew Luck, I think, is a great one. Andrew Luck said exact. And in many ways, Cam Newton is not one, but because the hype wasn't there, but he could have been. 
Like he yeah. should have been that type of trans, you know, visionary. Like if people really had a vision of what he could have been. Um, the, I got one you last question for you, Cody. A vision, a vision of what could it be, uh, of what could be when you see something that everyone else thinks is crazy. I, I got a question is if uh, Trevor Lawrence and Clemson goes and loses uh-huh. the national championship, what does that do to your value, your evaluation? I because mean, really, here is the thing is that it is I, I don't want to yeah. hear really nothing because when you say you are talking about a guy who can change your organization at a flick of the switch, a guy that's worth an unprecedented mm-hmm. amount of, of ca- draft capital, confidence, a risk, a bet that is inherently so risky. If he can't win the national championship with Clemson, and, a, and the top talented team in the league, how is he going to go into another league and do that with subpar talent? So, one, he's already done it. He's beaten Alabama. He's beaten Ohio State. He's beaten Notre Dame. Right. I'm saying and about this. Way, he should be able to no, do it every you. time, right? If I mean, if he's this good, he, when he gets there this year, this is he, he should be at the top of the mountain right now. I would yeah. say lose if he wins this year. I would say okay, that continues to pad and add a little bit of weight to your argument. But if he loses, I feel like it really undermines the fabric of that how transcendent he could be. I understand you. And hey, listen, uh, Clemson has played Notre Dame two times this year. In our first appearance, uh, f- uh, uh, freshman quarterback DJ Uriangalale threw for almost 400 yards, okay? He was not the problem with Clemson the first time they played Notre Dame. Yet the second time they played in the ACC championship here in Bank of America Stadium, Trevor Lawrence shredded them to pieces. He was the difference in that matchup where the first one went to double overtime. It shows you what the presence of Trevor Lawrence does that his presence on the football field was the difference in them being the number two ranked team in the country. Trevor Lawrence has proven to rise. Has he to ever the been occasion. injured? Has he ever been injured? Um, no. So one time, like uh, a major Sarah, injury. Like, has he ever no, suffered like no, a season? No. So, and, and by the way, he's tough as fuck. He will throw his body weight around. I mean, he looks sure, like a thin sure, dude. Good. He looks but he's great. I mean, he's. Pounds. I think that this is we have to be careful. Is that people who are don't believe that this is uh, like even a re- not even a realistic, but even a uh, people who think that this is a fantastic and fantastic in a bad way, like fantasy <laughs> um, yeah. idea is that they also are not saying that he's not this that great. I think they're just saying that it's too fantastic of a concept to even float out there. The number's 252-228-5098. And I do think this is I've seen Trevor Lawrence throw that deep ball. It it is pretty awesome. It's pretty damn awesome. But Peyton Manning uh, was pretty damn awesome in college as well and had an awesome career in the NFL. Tough first year. I I think Trevor Lawrence is the real deal. Is would you say he's better than Deshaun Watson? Yeah, Patrick, and Mahomes. that's tough for me because I love me some Deshaun, dude. Patrick Mahomes. I mean, the trajectory. As will a, he be uh, better? This? Do you think he finishes yeah. his career with a better career than Patrick Mahomes? Dude, uh, that's tell me that's an unfair question because uh, I mean Patrick Mahomes is literally in. The, the most it's perfect not scenario. It's to not an unfair question. Is, this, is that it doesn't yeah, matter the this? scenario for Trevor. You're saying Trevor Lawrence is good enough to overcome any scenario. Well, are you asking me to judge him against a guy who's on the trajectory of being NFL's version of Michael Jordan? So what I'll say yeah, is this. Yeah, yes, is that. Yeah. Yes, because you yeah, are I saying did. he is the next. He, you're saying he's LeBron James. So what I'm saying is. 
if you judge Trevor Lawrence next to Patrick Mahomes based on everything from high school to college and what they did, Trevor Lawrence is in a notch above Patrick Mahomes. Okay. I think and that's fair. Way, I, mean, that's, by, I mean, that's not even and, fair. Uh, it's just real real talk right there. Yeah, and, and two two more real fast yeah. points. Um uh I would if you put Trevor Lawrence or Deshaun Watson or uh Justin Fields on that uh Kansas City Chiefs football team, I'm taking nothing away from Patrick Mahomes. Patrick is incredible. But when you have that kind of roster, yeah, you're gonna be able to have a certain level of success. Um mm. number mm. two, if the chat room starts to refer to me as Cody Herney, I will leave this fucking show, bro. I will leave that is not the nickname for your boy. You better figure out something different because <laughs> that's not the fucking one, bro. All right, now let's do it. Okay. All right, next go. Hey, hey, hey. You know who it is. What's good, fellas? It's G Baby. <laughs> Bye. Man, Marty Herney, get your bitch ass out of here, motherfucker. <laughs> you ain't wanted here in the motherfucking Carolina, motherfucker. Oh, my God, did Christmas come early? Good Lord. Hey, Cody, I, I want you to live in life, baby. Oh, you better enjoy this day, this I'm night, sorry. baby. I want you to just talk shit the whole show. That's what I'm expecting is for you to talk shit the whole fucking show. You called it, you wanted it, and you got it, baby. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look, I, I need to put this away. Hold on, hold on. I got, I, I got big news. Well, it's not big news, but if anybody talks shit on my boy Cody in the wheelchair again, bruh, I want all the fucking smoke. I don't respect that shit unless you tell me anybody that actually knows, dude. That's that's different. If you a family friend, that's different. If you know him out hard, that's different. But if you just some random motherfucker calling into the show talking shit, my, bruh, I want all the fucking smoke. Don't talk shit and don't say, oh, I'm going to kick you out of the chair. Nigga, I'm going to kick you in your fucking face. And then I'm going to go to your mama's house and I'm going to fuck her on a pussy, bro. Don't talk shit on my fucking, my boy Cody, dog. I don't respect that shit. For real. Now, we're going to put that aside. Oh, my God, this is a beautiful day. I'm sick of just having first-round draft picks hit. It's, all, it's more than that. And not only that, fellas, not only that, we are half a game away from being in the third pick. That sounds beautiful, magnificent. So I'm kissing my cheek. Yeah, baby, yeah. Uh, Yo, yeah, that was I got hitters, y'all. I got them shooters, bro. Start some shit with your boy. I'm going to send my man G-Baby coming for that ass. And when All he right? says that ass, you know he means your mama's ass. ass. Do y'all want to <laughs> fuck with that man? Y'all heard him. Bro, that man's crazy. Uh, We got a uh, we got our buddy, in the, our pal, CK in the house. Yeah, look who's just What's up, man? man? How's it going, boys? Hey, what man. Are you, are you, uh, look at how hey, bearded are you, a- you are, homie. Hey, uh, What'd you say? Uh, You're so it's, it's bearded. Him. You're so hairy in the face. Yeah, I am, hundred percent. Hey, you wouldn't. Uh, uh, you wouldn't happen to be uh, living the dream, would you? Bro, <laughs> living the dream more so today than I think any day. Like, oh. <laughs> bro, guys, I know. I know you guys may not know who who these guys are, but I was playing today. I was streaming with Stone Mountain sixty four. Marley 13 and Jeff Leach. And those guys are all Facebook partners. Don't get me wrong, but oh, stone mountain has a, uh, very large following, like 3 million followers. Um, and so it was an opportunity of a lifetime guys. And, uh, you know, Hey, listen, it was, uh, it was fantastic. Had a great time. And did uh, y'all get a dub? We did not with stone stone. The game after stone left, we got a dub. Hmm. Tell him to but, get his yeah. shit together. Fun time, fun time, guys. But that's why I was so late. I had uh, that, and it was uh, glorious, and I had a good time. All right. Well, uh, we're Ooh, glad to have you here. You missed. Uh, we had a whole trial. Um, Cody Lashney uh, presented, tried to uh, to bring a lawsuit against Panther Nation or file a suit 
uh, to get to Trevor to trade up for Trevor Lawrence. Uh, we had a whole defense prosecutor judge the whole thing. It was a big mm-hmm. deal. Uh, so right now we're in the cat calls and we're going to keep pounding through them because uh, there's a lot still to go. Whoop, whoop. It's your boy QT Zero out What's here up, in Cali, QT? man. Fucking, uh, I gotta say, I'm a, uh, I'm a little disappointed in um, your boy Herney being gone, but at the same time, I'm an optimistic person and I like to look at the cup half full more than half empty. And I know, I know David Tepper is gonna go deep into those deep ass pockets and uh, go get the, that that that. Uh, that man of the future, and uh, and we we are definitely trading up or trading down in the draft, and I and I believe that that's the motherfucker that's coming in to take this job. That's something he's gonna have to explain and uh, to get that job. You know what I'm saying? Like we either trading back to 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 have more uh you know more fucking assets building up with you know getting our defense more bulky or more offensive linemen, so on and so forth. Or we're trading up to get your boy Lawrence, man, which I'm happy with either way. I would love to see, you know, Lawrence connecting the, the north and the south. And uh, if we trade back, I would love to see more uh, more pieces. And maybe fucking send Bridgewater in that on that deal with trading back or trading up, whatever it may be. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? So, so, uh, it can make the deal worth it for us in the long run. And I feel like I'm saying the motherfuckers coming in, which I have a couple of names. I, I really like Cody mentioned, like Dan Morgan, you know what I'm saying? That'd be, that'd be gangster. You know, he, he's, he's, uh, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? Get your boy Luke, you know, all nice and primed up and see how his future could be. And it could, uh, could really make a nice, successful future for us. Yeah, all right, y'all. Call. Follows up, man. Carolina. Right. From the West. Great call there. Uh, let's keep going. Hey, this is Kevin from Charleston. I love this move, Fire and Herney. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to give you some history before I go to the present. All right? Like, before, we all we all know about the D'Angelo William Johnson Stewart contracts. But even before that, like, remember, in 2008, Jake DeLone was coming back after Tommy John surgery. And he was horrible that year. Luckily, our running game and defense got us to our best franchise record that year, which was 12 and 4. He had 15 touchdowns, 13 interceptions that year. And we played the Cardinals in the playoffs, which was my first playoff, my first game at a Panthers game. And he threw five interceptions and one fumble. Mm -hmm. And we got blown out by a shitty, well, I mean, they got to the Super Bowl, but you know, their record wasn't good that year, Cardinals team. And what did Marty Harney do? He signed a 30, we signed Jake DeLone, 34, for 42.5 million, 20 million guaranteed over five years. The next year, Jake DeLone only played 11 games, put on injury reserve, and threw eight touchdowns and 18 interceptions. And the next year, we didn't have any quarterbacks. Waits is D. Smith again. And then in the Wildcat, because we had no fucking quarterback, because Marty Herney didn't bring anybody in. And then let's go on to John Beeson and his contract. John Beeson was great, but John Beeson in 2011 was paid the highest middle linebacker in NFL history. $50 million, five years, $25 million guaranteed. That first game that year, he was hurt. That's thought He only played one game that year after getting the contract. Next year, he played four games and was replaced by Luke Keekley, middle linebacker, and then eventually Chase Blackman. Third game, the third act, ah, sorry, third year that year, three games, traded to the Giants for a seventh rounder. All right, and then you get the Williams and Stewart contract. Fast forward this year, might not might not sign Moulton or Samuel, cutting the Cam Newton on a one-year deal, mm. signing Teddy Bridgewater to three years, $63 million, $33 million guaranteed, $15 million signing bonus, signing Christian McCaffrey to the highest-paid running back mm. only four games this year. And, you know, people like to say, oh, he's great at picking first-round picks or whatever. Listen, <laughs> 
Chris Rock had a great bit. Hey, this is Kevin again. I got yeah, cut off. Do I was going to say about, you know, the first round picks, like Chris Rock had a great bit where he says, you know, you know, I take care of my kids. I ain't never been in jail. It's like, yeah, you're supposed to, you low expectation motherfucker. Like, you're supposed to hit on your first round picks. They're first round picks. It's literally the easiest pick to make. Like, yeah. people, like, oh, we, you got to give them credit right. for picking Cam Newton. Are we literally going to give the Jaguars and the Jets credit for picking Trevor Lawrence? No. We're going to be like, fucking right, you should have. You know, I just think Ernie was extremely overrated. Looking at these contracts over the year, I mean, come on. I think that's I all like, I got to say. That, great call. Fantastic call. I don't think Kearney was over. I don't think overrated is the right terminology because no one ever he rated was him highly. Is they just said this to people who said he was garbage. Like, hold up. Wait a minute. It's kind of like uh, the Rivera talk. Is that, think about this, is that. I mean, the the uh, level that people were turning on Ron Rivera, at the, it, it might be the right time to part. That's a different story. But look at what he's – I mean, he's not a bad coach. Mm-hmm. Might not be the best coach, but he's not horrible. I mean, so this is a big deal. It was, so. ben, it was beneficial for both parties yes, to move on. Yes, yes. It was beneficial for, for us, and it was beneficial for Ron. I and like it's um, time to move on from Marty Herney. And we haven't heard from you, CK. What are your thoughts about this? Uh, yeah. The, the see, move see, and I the feel decision? like CK was one of the the more the more vocal defenders of, of Marty Herney. I think I think it's oh boy. You've got to look at it from the perspective of number one, even last week I said I wouldn't be upset if he's fired, right? I'd be highly concerned. You know, with the the trajectory of the franchise, especially in my opinion, if the top guy on the list of David Tepper's, re- you know, uh, looking, you know, is the guy who's at the front office of the New England Patriots, not super stoked about the idea of bringing somebody from there. But, you know, especially since we know how they handle, you know, drafts is not necessarily great. Um, but when we let him go, I mean, honestly, I liked the way that Tepper explained it. He said, listen, we needed him to stay here for one more year. We needed to learn more from him because I know people think that because I came from the Pittsburgh Steelers that I had all this knowledge of the organization, but I didn't. I needed to learn. And he said, sometimes the student needs to graduate. And that's what happened. I think he realized yep. that what what he was getting from Marty Herney was coming to a dead end. And maybe he needs to start really kind of pushing for a vision that is his own. Um, just like letting go of Ron Rivera. He could have kept Ron Rivera. And I don't think anybody in the media or anywhere else would have would have blamed him for keeping Ron Rivera because to be fair, Ron Rivera's career was ruined by Cam Newton's injuries. Um, at least with the, the Carolina Panthers. I disagree. So I, and I, and I saw Kevin Gray said, uh, Ron Rivera was never the problem. He never had a franchise quarterback after 2015 is I, I think that Ron Rivera brings a certain set of qualities to your program that yeah. are beneficial that are, that are beneficial, right? hundred percent. If you're having problems, I mean, and think about this, is that Ron Rivera, not only did he have to do that, like have an injured quarterback, he had um, an owner scandal. He had GMs coming in and out. He had Greg Hardy. He had like Josh Norman and Ron Rivera went up there and took the bullets for everything is Jerry Richardson and the feet touching and the sexual harassment. Ron Rivera, face of the organization. Justin, uh, Greg Hardy, drug de- drugs and guns and beating up his girlfriend and this and that at a time where domestic violence was the biggest dang thing in the NFL. Think about this. is The domestic violence moment in the NFL was almost as big as Black Lives Matters is. Right? I mean, like, it was a... a it was an incredible watershed moment. And Ron Rivera, bullets, bullet, just just took it. He's a, so he brings those things. He brings um a mentality of a team that can win with a defense. He uh did a lot for Carolina. Best coach in Carolina's history. And um we had the most success really in the last decade in our history. And on top of that is I think Ron Rivera 
is bringing his talents to an organization that was desperately in need of him and a perfect yeah. Yeah. fit for him. And I saw someone say that he's building something special in Washington. I don't know if he's building something special. I think what he's doing is saving a fran- an organization from the depths of despair when it comes yeah. to the NFL, uh, the logo change, the this and that. He's a minority. It, it all fits. A minority candidate, you know, coach, a defense, um, a guy that can win with Dwayne Haskins or damn Kyle Allen or whatever it is because that's the type of team he wants, man. But, that's I the mean, type of – he will pers- roll in the mud with you, dude. He's a tough – he's a badass. He's a yeah. badass. But yeah, that, he is, but I'm also not down for this revisionist, like, history thing, too. Like, he is all those things. And he did dodge a whole lot of bullets, and he, mm-hmm. he put on the tough face at tough times in this organization. But all of the shit that, that we were saying about him was very real criticisms of him that he never changed. And by the way, to the guy who said in the chat that he never had a franchise quarterback after 2016, uh, one that was uh, 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 he had a, a whole bunch of injuries that were not his problem. And number two, if Ron Rivera didn't think that he had a franchise quarterback, is that not incumbent upon him in some way, shape, or form to point that right. out to ownership and, or anyone else and say that that was a problem? Excellent point. So, excellent point. Yeah, Look, is that my out- my point is not that, and I, and I want to caution what I'm saying is this: is that I just gave you all the good points about Ron Rivera. Right. There are and there is, there are negatives not being able to cultivate young talent, not being effective in you know the draft and some there's a lot of different things that are going on, but his type of team is what Washington is, is it, he needs a team that's trying to back into the playoffs. And it's just that this it was time for us to turn the new page. I think it was the right time. And I think this is that just like, despite, regardless of whether Marty Herney's good, bad, or I mean, indifferent, the worst, the best, or whatever, it's time to turn the page to the next phase of the Carolina yeah. Panthers. Let's keep going through with the calls. D3 fam, Panther Nation, uh, your boy Josh from Mass. What's up, Josh? Originally intended to uh, have a call full of piss and vinegar uh, after watching Saturday night's game. Um, but then uh, yesterday happened and uh, kind of softened things out there. Um, oh, I did not be happy, huh, Josh? We lost one of the all-time great, uh, not just Panthers, but one of the all-time great football players. Um, you know, I think that uh, oh, there's at least a passing remembrance, um, especially for those of us who remember the early years of this team. Um, man was a big part of our team's second year push to uh, an NFC championship, one that we lost, um, but still, you know, to get there in, in year two was impressive. And uh, and uh, Kevin Green uh, as a player was nothing short of impressive himself. So just wanted to make sure I pay respect to that. Um, but yeah, no, I think. Saturday night, it was on display for everybody to see a lot of uh, a lot of what a lot of us have been talking about. I don't really understand anybody who's still hanging on to to Teddy. And there's a few; they're 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 dying out. No, numbers, but there's still there's a few no. hanging on to the fuck. Really? Yes, there are. Yes, there are. Go to Twitter. Yes, there Something are. Something more than a bridge uh, to them. I don't know what to say. Um, that's, that's why I think I'm confused why there's anybody on. that exists. <laughs> I think that's, you know, that, and you look at the remarks that Pepper himself has had. And, Which uh, I think are very glaring about what we're doing in the draft. He actually understands the football side of things a little more than maybe a lot of us gave him credit for. Um, he certainly recognizes the positions of need and, uh, and we can't forget this is a man who's done bold things throughout his life to get to where he is. And if you think he won't do something wild on draft night, if he won't go for a GM who will do those kind of things, I think you're sorely mistaken. 
if anybody knows when to hold your cards close and when to give people peaks and things like that, I think it's Tepper. You know, I mean, yeah. we ripping some of these Band-Aids off over the last year and a half have been rough. Oh, and I'm out of time. All right, here's I'll the next back. Here's the next part of his call, and uh, Kevin Costner will not be our GM. Hey, guys, Josh from Mass again. And, uh, you know, I really, uh, again, back to Tepper, uh, I don't think he's afraid to do the things that he needs to do. Um, especially, like I said, especially after hearing what he said in the, uh, the little – Web, web, web interview there, whatever the hell you want to call that. Um, yeah, I think it's obvious what the points of need are on this team. Um, <clears throat> and I think now more than ever, it is very clear to a lot of people that getting a quarterback in the draft is a must do. Um, I, I get it. The line needs to be, the lines need to be solidified really on both sides of the ball. If you think about it, when you look at, um, KK's probably done after this year. Um, yeah, at least done as a Panther. Um, you know, that's going to need to be shored up. The O line really needs it, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I just don't see us not taking a quarterback at the beginning of the all. I, I think we have to, and then grab at, grab pieces that we hope can be. Eventual starters on the offensive line. Oh my God. Wanted nothing more than their potential healthy bodies to get in there when Greg Little inevitably fails us again. Um, but I will say, uh, our defense did look pretty good in that second half, didn't it? Holding the Green Bay Packers to three points at home, no less. I mean, I get it. COVID year, home games aren't as big of a deal, but, um, yeah, it's, it's really hard to be disappointed with that defense. Um, just the only real disappointment on the defense is Brian Burns getting snubbed for the Pro Bowl, but that is what it yeah. is, you know. And uh, I kind of expect it to just be something to light a fire under, not just him, but the whole defense's ass, you know, especially with Jeremy Chin going out there and saying, uh, you know, in his opinion, there's there's not a better DE in the NFC than Brian Burns. And I, I tend to agree. I mean, <laughs> Tony said it before, it takes three years for DNs to usually come around and, and start being a force. And this dude's in his second year, and he's already becoming what we really thought he could be. Um, so I guess that's really it. Unfortunately for everybody who wanted piss and vinegar and drunk Josh, uh, he didn't get it. But, hey, maybe uh, – Maybe this Sunday in a post game, you know, when I can call in right after a game and I'm still drunk, that'll that'll work out. Dr. All right, Matt. thanks, Josh, man. Thanks. Even though we got um, middle road Josh there making too much sense, making too, too much, much sense, sense there. Um, I appreciate you- I appreciate Josh from Mass whenever he calls in, no matter what state he calls in, man. That's can I- that's a C three Panther faithful right there. Absolutely. Can I ask a question? Did you guys already address the 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 statements David Tepper made about their plans in the draft? Kinda. Yeah. I mean, we talked about it. Kinda. We guessed around it. Yeah. What Where statement he said, It's glaringly obvious what we need. Yeah, he did say that, and then he started mentioning yeah, uh, corners, uh, you know, uh, defensive backfields. Yeah. Uh, you know he and was dancing he around the, the one reason. Metaphor. No, he used an entire metaphor about a bad contract, uh, basically. He was talking yeah. about Marty Herney. And the entire metaphor was built, or analogy, was built to a Teddy Bridgewater. Um, look, is then I, I, I do think Tepper is very smart. I think yeah. that he is thinking, I think he has a way to see a kind of above the forest while we're trying to pick the forest out from the trees. He can pick the forest out from the landscape entirely. I do believe that. I I mean, I just don't believe that necessarily that makes him a savant in every case whatsoever. 
But um, he's made a lot of good decisions here. And I think this is that if anybody knows something, it's probably people who who bet on stocks and this and that, that sometimes you got to cut bait even if it's a loss. And maybe yeah. that's, you know, is that here? At the end of the day, is it, it, maybe Marty Herney was a patsy when it comes to the Teddy Bridgewater thing. Maybe this, but is that you, it's, you know when to cut bait. And look, is that I'm not going to, there are no Teddy Bridgewater supporters around anymore. And there shouldn't be. And if they are, then they got to understand this, is that yeah. it would take, it if you think that the that, uh, Cody's deal to trade for Trevor Lawrence requires for everything to go right, Right, like I mean, everything. Trevor Lawrence to be transcendent. You to kill the draft. You to negotiate free agency. You to you know, equally winning with Teddy Bridgewater requires equally everything to go right. Yeah, I mean, it's just but, very simple, yeah. and we've seen it. Is that Teddy Bridgewater? alone has not elevated the Carolina Panthers. If I asked you this, uh, actually, what has been the most, um, if I said this, is has the defense been um, like pleasantly surprising or dismal this year? What would you say? Pleasantly surprising. Pleasantly surprising. All right. The former. Yeah, is a, the offensive line pleasantly surprising or dismal? Pleasantly, pleasantly surprising. surprising. Yeah, maybe the worst case you could say is middle of the road, right? Yeah, yeah been the, the there have been some bad games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There no, there there bad bad games, coaching some... staff, dismal, pleasantly surprising, or dismal? Pleasantly surprising. Yeah, yeah. and so think the, of the only... roster. Think yeah, of the roster. Exactly. Right. The only one where you say, di- like, you don't pick pleasantly surprising is Teddy Bridgewater. You guys yeah. are kind of making the point of my trade, though. Okay. Is that All right? We're not, no, no, we're not going by that. We're going through the calls. We're going through the calls. We're going through the calls. <laughs> hey, guys. Long time listener. And I just want to get a little sentimental. I just want to say, Tony, I'm proud of you. You know, I've watched you, you know, for the last five years and you've just grown so much as a you know, podcast host. And you're doing oh, great. Thank you. I just want you to keep it up. Uh, now, I miss Joey and Mel. Oh, Those man. are great times. Uh, Cody and the mailman, they're great. The other guy's a narcissist and fucking dickhead, but it is what it is. But you guys are overall doing great. Just want to say thanks. Ouch. Wait, who was he talking about? Wait, who was he? Who did he call a dickhead? I'm confused because there's two Cody. Who's a narcissist? It's me or it's me or Cody. Like it's one of the two. It's Cody. I mean, I'm I'm definitely. I'm definitely a dickhead and a narcissist, so I'll take that if people fucking want to put that the on me. I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out who, <laughs> who he was talking about. Oh. Was it, I, I, I don't know. Here, you know yeah, what? I don't care who he was talking about. Did away, you hear bro? those compliments he gave me? <laughs> I love this guy. Next go. <laughs> what's up, C3? It's uh, Run DMC Lovato. Tyler, what's up? I know you guys are going to be talking a lot about Marty Hearn tonight. Yeah. So I wanted to give my two cents. Uh, Marty Hurdy's been fired, and I feel indifferent on it. I think he was an okay GM. I know Cody hates him, but I feel like he was okay, but he wasn't great. Yeah. He wasn't terrible. Um, I'm actually pretty scared for the future, to be honest, because we have to nail this next GM. I'm uh, really worried because this draft's coming up, and I know I just listened to David Tepper's interview. He pretty much said, you know, Teddy Bridgewater, he's is not a bum. franchise quarterback. Basically, say it with your words. chest, bro. Say those words. But say it with your chest, bro. Yeah. Tell that bum. He knows the situation, and I know that we're not going to. Teddy Bridgewater's not the future, and David Tepper pretty much said it. Um, so this next GM is going to have to draft a quarterback, and I have a bad – I just have a horrible feeling. Um, you, you never know. I just feel like this next GM – if this next GM drafts a Kyle Trask or a Mac Jones, I'm going to be fucking done. No 
Like, I'm so terrified that. of that. I don't see him doing that. This next GM's going to try to be cute and draft a white pocket quarterback who's just trash. Um, I have a feeling that the next GM will not want to draft a quarterback like uh, Trey Lance from North Dakota State because he doesn't have much film. And he's kind of a risky pick. Um, cause if Trey Lance and Justin Fields do not fall to us, or say someone trades in front of us and gets, and both of those are off the board, the only quarterback left in my opinion that's, that's cool. worth a damn is Trey Lance, and I have a feeling that we won't pick Trey Lance, we'll pick one of those shitty ass Mac Jones or Kyle Trask quarterback, and I'm terrified of that. Uh, we can trade back and get that though. Exactly. Yeah, we can we can have the draft. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like scouting like, reports on this podcast because I want to educate Tony and uh, how do the I other take Cody so many shots about these quarterbacks, and you need to see for yourselves and evaluate what you think. Because I know for a fact, Mac Jones and Kyle Trask are just trash. Okay, they're not going to be. They're going to be Kirk Cousins at best. That's their ceiling. So, give me your thoughts on that. Uh. Are you guys excited? And if I had to put money on it, I'm going to say we're going to get Kevin Colbert from the Steelers. We're going to pull him away. I wouldn't be mad at that. Uh, who do you guys think we're going to get? Ooh, I think it's crap shoot at this point. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, there's so many names floating around. Is I almost... I know this is strange, but I could almost feel like Hern- I mean, uh, Tepper brings in a duo he brings in a football gm and a president like out of fucking wall street he's already got the he's already got the president like he's already got some money yeah you know so i think i think honestly the the guy he brings in is going to be a front office just like look at the you know i think he's gonna be 30 something dude i don't think he's gonna be an old hat he's already said we're not getting uh we're not getting one of those stupid search committees or not search committees these uh advisory where they they, yeah where they get uh tony dungy and all these guys to meet four or five times to tell this rich guy what they think is Tepper and rule are making this decision. This could be like, mm-hmm. and, and you know what? This is the way it should be. I think if you're going to interview for this position, it should be Tepper. It should be that president who the president mentioned. I think he used to be president of a football, like a soccer, yeah, like team, a right? soccer club, football, yeah. football. And like you have him, you have, and you have Matt rule and it's a three panel thing and it's like this is you know you got two people in there you got one person that knows football and what he wants to do you got one guy that knows what business and he wants to do and then you got this other president guy who knows whatever he knows and they make the decision why do you need tony dungy to tell you exactly thank you thank you it's you a relic. Bro, it's a relic. Bro, I think that really Tepper is bro. trying to advance in the into the future. So I don't think he wants a GM like Jeff Ireland, or I don't think he wants even even those those aren't the worst options. I think he's going to pull somebody out that I don't know that we might not even be thinking of. I hope not, man. Why? But I mean, this, I mean, this shit doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be hard. If there's a list of top general managers that have proven their their weight in some capacity, some way, shape, or form. He wants a future thinking GM. He doesn't want a guy that won in the 90s or the early 2000s. He wants a guy that's going to win in the next generation of football. He wants a guy that's teach. He because wants, that's how you need to think, bro. He, wants, he doesn't want uh, Plato. He wants Aristotle. Yeah, oh, I did my ass should fucking. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, like, that's all I'm saying. I just don't know if it's going to be one of the these file. guys that is so easy. Like, I don't think it's a usual suspects list. That's all I'm saying. All right, let's go to the next call. What's going on, C3 Nation? It's your boy, Jay Anderson, hitting y'all up. Hope y'all being safe. Um, Get right to it, man. Marty Herney, gone. You know. Hey, I. One thing I, I'll say this is that, you know, he, you know, Barney Herney is a Panther legend. I mean, even though, you know, he is a Panther legend while, um, you know, 
the good first round picks that he draw in and stuff like that. So, you know, give him credit credit is due. But it was time to make a change and it was it was time to make a change. Um you know, since even when you know, we fired Dave Getterman, he should Marty Herney shouldn't have never been brought back in. You know, it was just I, you know, as soon as he was as soon as he came in as an intern, I was like, Oh Lord, here we go. You know, not this again. So I mean it it I'm you know, I'm it took it should have been he should have been gone last year. And stuff like that. If you wanted to you know, a, a lot of this is Tepper. I mean Tepper, Tepper need to get his mind right. He should have got his mind right last year. It's like if you're gonna do away with the coach, you should do away with the GM. Just like, you know, some just like a lot of fear involved now that other franchise would do. Um we could have been a had our guy. We could have, you know, hey, we could have had Eric B in here. We could have had um Stefanski in here. We could have had um, you know, as the coaches. But we could have had, you know, Andrew Barry or somebody in here. You know, a good GM. And you know, everything is basically on Tepper now. I mean, everything is on him because he got to pick the right GM. I mean, he, you know. He signed with um saying Matt Rule gonna look for nah you it got it's you do it's you do like this is your team like you bought this team you want to change you want to change this own um, franchise you want to make this a winner coach you got to select the guy and you yeah you got to select the guy you got to select the rightful guy a GM that's going that's gonna turn this franchise around and put this franchise into into winning into a winning culture you know. So everything is on Tepper. Everything been on Tepper since he came in here. The time he released Cam so badly, you know, it was on him. I know people gonna put it on Marty, but for me, I put it on Tepper. Um. So hopefully, you know, hopefully he get his um, he get his ass up and do something. <coughs> All right, y'all. Well, That's fair. I think this when it comes to uh. Tepper and, and CK, you alluded to some of the comments he made in his interview. He he talked about a different type of structure where where it wasn't GM to coach, owner, GM, coach, but where those guys are working diligently all the time together as a together. team. Mm -hmm. And um, and what we have learned about this is that um, Tepper's thumb, fingerprints are all over this organization. So he might not be rash like a Jerry Jones or as bombastic as a Jerry Jones or as ridiculous as who's the Snyder for like a dumbass. Oh, like over, in, over yeah. in Washington. Yeah. yeah. But Snyder, Tepper is yes, not a silent partner in this by any means. And oh, he wants, not. he wants a, he wants an office where he is at, he, where everybody walks past everybody's office and at the end of the day the buck stops at his that's what he wants um yeah and you know that's not a terrible way of he's looking a business at it man. that's how it should be in his it's, mind because he's a businessman yeah is that the coach needs to be accountable to the gm the gm needs to be accountable to the coach and both need to be accountable to the owner so i like it i, I like this new structure that he's trying to invent or at least um, crystallize, or that's not the right word, uh, galvanize in Carolina. We'll just see how it works or if, um, you know, how does somebody with all that money take uh, adversity at this point in his career? Um, I'm sure he doesn't like losing anymore. Next call. What's up, fellas? This is uh, Zach from Greensboro. Um, What's up, so Zach? we got rid of Marty Herney. It's uh, interesting. I mean, I'm you know, been on the train that we need to get rid of him. Um, you know, kind of like y'all been talking about for the past few weeks, my biggest concern is exactly who are we going to get to replace him. Uh, I, I know they sent out a list of who they're interviewing or whatever. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts, and y'all may have already covered it by the time I call in on who you think they'll hire or who you would want them to hire. But um, uh, personally, I'm not, I'm not really sure, but <clears throat> I don't know. It's just interesting and uh at this point you know kind of just hope we lose out the season and i've said that before just because i'd uh 
like to get a better draft pick, but at the same time, it's tough to say because tuning in every game day and seeing us lose is getting old. It's like, uh, I believe, Chuck from Elizabeth City. So, oh, it's not you know, bad. Yeah, you might want the extra draft pick. But, I've had a oh, great brother. season. It's, it's this season's to, been like, better when you, when to me than the last on two seasons. Or Saturday, on Monday or Thursday, I guess, it don't matter how bad your team is, you still want to see those dudes win. So, um, yeah. I'm not really sure if I had a question or a point, but uh, I don't know. I, I hope that uh, we make an upgrade at uh, GM, and I hope that uh... – uh, Thanks for the call, man. Here, Cody, I'm going to pass the mic to you. Do you hey, remember your like list you um, that we went through? Because I still got them loaded up. Do, you remember Do I remember? Your list? I, still, I still got the list, baby. Let's, start, uh, let's go from uh, from five to one real quick. Number one pick, uh, not the number five pick for GM replacement coming from New Orleans. Yeah, and honestly, I, I think I might have had him too low. I, I really like Jeff Ireland, uh, the, the, the guy from New Orleans. Uh, I, I even had this written right here. Under Loomis's guidance, Ireland has thrived and is largely accredited for the defensive transformation that the Saints have undergone via the draft over the last four years. In 2017 alone, Ireland landed four starters in Marshawn Lattimore, Ryan Ramchick, Marcus Williams, and Alvin Kamara. That's a damn good draft that they are and still reaping the benefits of. that big ass D tackle the they lost? Day. Who's that big ass D tackle they lost last year? That was awesome, or maybe it was uh, this year. It was this uh, year, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not Andrews Pete. Um, not defensive I, side of the ball. Like he was supposed to be real good, like, and he got hurt early on. And I think they ended up trading for a defensive tackle. God, he was like Elder Rankins. Yes, Rankins. But he's not. He's still on the team. Yeah, yeah, no, what I'm saying is this. That's part of that defense, despite him not being contributing because he's hurt. That's still a success story to that defense, oh, yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so Ireland, yeah. then next. Who is next? Uh, I had Kevin Colbert, and this was kind of a pipe dream because he uh, – This is what a lot of does. people think, right, coming from – and there's another name linked in Pittsburgh, too. Yeah, that one you'd have to tell me. I don't have it off the top of my head, but – um. Yeah, Kevin Colbert, uh, you know, he's overseen two Super Bowl championship winning teams. And during his run in Pittsburgh, the Steelers uh, have also suffered just one losing season in that time. All right, who's next? Yeah, uh, this is another guy I'm really high on. It's Mike Borgonzi. Borgonzi helped to build the Chiefs into a Super Bowl champion a few years ago. Uh, he's part of a front office that helped revance Kansas City's defense in 2019 into one that finished seven in both total points allowed and points allowed per game. 308 total points and 19.3 points per game. This came after the Chief. Uh, this came after the Chiefs' defense in 2018 finished 24th in the same two categories. Yeah, all right, next. Um. Peters. I actually don't – yeah, Adam Peters. Um, whatever I had written up must have uh, All right. been oh, – Okay, but what here, the number one. Yeah, and I, I've been mentioning this for a while now. I even uh, was you, thinking we about thinking him about the this first time. last time when yeah. uh, Gettleman was getting fired. We were floating this name out there. And honestly, I don't know why you don't hear this name more often. I really don't understand. Uh, every time there's a GM job uh, that comes open, I mean, he is in the position that gets hired to be a football GM. He's a director of pro football personnel. He was that for the Seattle Seahawks, and then he moved to Buffalo and started to do it for the Bills. Um, he has a connection with the Carolina Panthers. Uh, I would love for him to uh, – to be a part of this football team. He's done a tremendous job in Seattle. They're in the playoffs every year. And look at what Buffalo is doing, man. That's the the one of the uh, best teams in the AFC. If All the right. Kansas City Chiefs don't exist, the Bills are the best team in the AFC. Next yeah. call. What do you do, boy? What you do? It's your boy, Mike. It's hey, 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 supremely hard. <laughs> Whew. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, I'll start off with the uh, a 
Big Merry Crima. Big Merry Crima. To all you filthy animals. <laughs> Enjoy the holiday. Uh, so guys, here we are. Sitting at the number four pick in the draft. Oh boy. And with the Bengals winning yesterday, uh, there's potential. Okay. For a top three pick. Okay, the okay. third pick is now our ceiling. Um, okay. So right now, you know. Not according uh, to Cody. I was a Packers fan last week. <laughs> I'm a football team fan this week. That sounds so funny yep. saying it. And uh, I am a, uh, a Saints fan in two weeks. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, same. Oh, I'm saying, buddy. Saying that. Um. So, um, Cody, uh, yeah, man. got your Christmas present early, buddy. Um, I, I, you know, I bet, I bet Doc from Back to the Future came roaring through that building in the DeLorean and was like, Marty, you can't go in there. <laughs> you won't come back. I don't have another flux capacitor to bring you back. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nah, bro, I got to go in. He called me in, and that was it. So, uh, <laughs> hopefully you. we can get a good man in here. Um, that, he brought in some good players, so I'll give him that. He just can't sign contracts. Uh, so, let me float this out to y'all. Um, Trey Lance. Or Zach Wilson, preferably Zach Wilson. I saw his tape. I saw Trey Lance's tape, and reminds me kind of a Lamar Jackson type. But um, I rather have Zach Wilson. Would you be open to the idea of trading back? Um, and now, mind you, we can easily get out of Teddy Bridgewater's contract in year three with only a five million uh dead cap hit. Think about that, but. As much as I want Zach Wilson, how do you feel about the option of trading back to somebody who wants one of those quarterbacks and gathering a bunch of picks? Uh, hey, we got the potential of four top quarterbacks going with the first four picks. So, Jason, let's open with you. Oh, man. So, oh. Trade him so, back and Trey Lance, right? I got to watch the combine, like I said earlier, man. I'm so torn. I don't know if I want him. I don't know if they should go for um, – what's his name? So either Wilson, Lance, or – is that what he was really asked? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, thoughts on trading back, potentially? Um. Don't want to lose your moment. It that's, sounds like oh, that's the if if Sewell is available, I'd go for Sewell. Okay, that's that's just me. I feel like that's that generational talent that Cody was referring to with Trevor Lawrence. I feel like that's how Sewell is with the tackle position. That's just me, though. So then going mm -hmm. going into next season, what do we do about quarterback? If we take Penn and Sewell or you know anyone else that Panther? Had. The names that the three names I hear the most outside of a quarterback are Penn Sewell. I hear uh, uh, Patrick Sertain, the corner from Alabama, right? And I hear Michael Parsons. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! If we take a damn linebacker, and they're all studs. Oh, I'm uh, telling you, yeah. Every every every, every they're Tuesday, all studs. Every rule for a different player no, that you don't I'm just saying this is that if you need a quarter look is that I'm with you on this if we didn't we should have taken a damn tackle when we had a quarterback we should have right. damn taken right. these players when we had a quarterback so I'm not entertaining the tight end shit I will not listen to that stupid shit about tight end and the top 15 no I don't want to hear it yeah. But I, yeah, I mean, I, what, I, what I'm trying to say is this, is that like, and I don't, and I understand Devin White is a gorgeous football player, but even he has mm -hmm. had, even people are coming in and talking about his limitations on this show, right? About pass coverage and whatever it is, this and that. 
is my yeah. point is this is that mm-hmm. we're not if you ain't taking like you need until the quarterback's fixed, nothing is fixed. So look, we had a top eight pick. We could have picked a left tackle. We had a top pick eight pick. We could have picked a corner. We had a top eight pick. We had all these damn picks. You pick, you know what I'm saying? Like, and we didn't. So I'm sorry. That mm-hmm. window's just passed. That's why I'm saying this is that if we don't get a quarterback, if we don't trade back into the first and get a quarterback, that's the only way or a left tackle. Other than that, I don't even want to hear yeah. it. I don't even want to hear it. And the maybe, only, maybe point, the corner. Maybe the corner. Maybe the corner. I, the maybe the corner. This point right now at number four, absolutely. Yeah. All right, next call. I do want to say moving oh, back is only, worth it, is only worth it if somehow, in my opinion, if we were able to grab Trey Lance and were able to move back in order to do it, that would be, in my opinion, really cool. If we do our due diligence on Trey Lance and we like him a lot, a lot of people don't know this. Because then you get the I mean, corner and you get Lance. And, and and a tackle and maybe a fucking another running back. I want to point this out. Uh, Trey Lance, out uh, last season for uh, the the Buffalo or the Bison, whatever the hell they are, in North Dakota State, man threw 42 touchdowns and nine Russian touchdowns or something crazy like that and didn't throw a single interception not one so the guy is a legitimate talent a lot of people want to uh, bring him down because he played this one off game Uh, it was literally one game against one opponent didn't have a season to prepare for didn't have the proper time and now all of a sudden people think different of Trey Lance like it, it's just it's an unfair evaluation. I really like Trey Lance, um, but I have no doubt that at this point in time, Zach Wilson is going to be drafted ahead of Justin Fields, unless Justin Fields does something crazy against Clemson. Well, and, and the combine would tell us, and this is just one more to the trade back talk, is we had our opportunities to trade back the last three years, two years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is that did. that's when and we needed to do it. Happen. Yeah, is that if you we should have done it last year, if that's what we're gonna do. I just feel yeah. like this is that, and I do understand there's not a lot of tape according to Chase Ebert on uh, Trey Lance. Um, there's just not enough tape to draft that high. I'm not saying I'm agreeing. There's not enough that. tape on Wilson either. No, I'm not. Yeah, is that that those are two very valid concerns. And what I would say is look at Mitchell Trubisky. And I would also not put Mitchell Trubisky in the same class as Zach Wilson. Like, I wouldn't even compare the two. As I saw that dude play. He wasn't that good. Yeah, not Zach I, Wilson, I watched- Trubisky. You know what I'm saying? And so they yeah. traded up in this and that. Uh, but I think this is at four right now. We better we had our chances to make a difference at left tackle and corner before. Sorry, we missed it. Now it's time to get the quarterback. Next call. Yo, what's up, guys? It's Nick from up here in Mass. So, first thing I wanted to comment about the game, okay? They were playing in Lambeau. Lambeau is freezing cold. As somebody who lives up in Mass, as well as many others, you know, that listen and shit, um, it gets pretty cold in the winter. And like Tony, I know I sent you the video last year of me working on the solar field out, out on the side of a mountain. Like, you have to get accustomed to it. And working out in it, you know, if you aren't used to it, it definitely puts wear and tear on your body in the aspect that, you know, your body struggles to try to uh, try to deal with the cold. You know, so that definitely gives the Packers an advantage. No doubt about it. Okay. Teddy looked atrocious. Okay. But that's not any different. You know, and I don't fault them necessarily for... You know, trying to uh, get the ball up and over. I mean, me personally, that's not what I would have done. You know, but that could have happened to anybody. And he should have had better control over the football. But when your arms are outstretched like that, you know, you can't put as much pressure on the ball to keep it still as if the ball was on your body. So it's it's understandable to see that knocked out. And that's not the play call I would have gone with. But at the same time, I don't really hold it against him. You know, and that brings me to to another part. It's as much as I can't stand Teddy Bridgewater, I'm trying to be open about it, you know, because 
when you dislike somebody or you can't stand them, you're so much, it's so much easier to just hop on them and talk smack and put them down and everything like that. You know, we all love Cam. Well, anybody who listens to the show really loves Cam except for a few, but it's just, Teddy's never going to be a Cam. We all know that. Okay. And I'm trying to be open with it, but at the same time, he makes so many mistakes and he's so inaccurate. You know, those awesome throws that you see that our wide receivers catch, how many of them are actually placed where they need to, where they need to be placed? But then you look at that game, that Thursday night game with the Raiders, you know, and they had their backup quarterback in and the dude was throwing dimes, man. You know, he was hitting his receiver right on the edge of the, of the field. You know, in the spot, in the perfect spot, so that way the defenders couldn't get, get the ball and stuff like that. And I just don't think Teddy could ever make a throw like that. No, At least he not physically on purpose. can't. Ding, 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 ding. To end the game, ding, ding, that ball was ding, ding. severely underthrown. And he should have made that. Even like, the DJ ball. And I'm, I'm glad CK's here for this. Not that, DJ that, that, that DJ ball was awful. I'll tell you all that right now. I agree with you. That DJ ball was terrible. Goddamn football. All right, so the best of football, his deepest throw of the game, CK, was to DJ Moore down the sideline, and it was a yep. big play for us, right? Yep. A needed play. And yes, I, was I was I happy that it connected correct? But you lead DJ, and he beats all those guys there. Yeah, I've been saying it for. Months, you know, really months. months it's been two time. months now. You've been. Saying. It was a spec catch. That's what it was. It was a spectacular catch because the man can't put the ball in places where it needs to be, especially deep. Yeah, I mean, and you, you're like I said. I mean, it's with. I'm just thankful DJ's playing even after Teddy almost took him out for the season by you know out just poorly throwing the ball anyway. You shouldn't like. That's the problem. So, for instance, we'll talk about. I'll go back to Kelvin Benjamin, right? Um, Kelvin Benjamin wasn't a good receiver. The benefit to Kelvin Benjamin, he, he was great at catching contested passes because guess what? That was the only separation he ever got was no His separation. Arms. <laughs> yeah. And so Cam <laughs> Newton would ass. throw it to him, not just because he, you know, not because Cam Newton was a bad quarterback, but because we had no other receivers. Right. And so uh, Kelvin Benjamin had an incredible looking year because he was throwing, he was catching these things. Like if you go back and look at the highlights, Kelvin Benjamin looked like a beast catching balls, like mossing people and all that. But it's because he couldn't do what other receivers were able to do and get separation. Now we have an opposite situation. Now we have a quarterback that can't get the ball where it needs to go and receivers that can get, get separation all day and still can't get the ball where they need to have it. They have to make acrobatic catches to make it look like they're just this incredible receiver, which they may be but they haven't been given an opportunity to actually show it on a stat sheet because Eddie Bridgewater can't get the ball out to him in stride. I have yet to see a pass in stride deep down the field past 20 yards. Yet to see that. Never. You haven't seen Preach. one of them. And here is the thing. And I went I went on Pirate Radio 1250 every Friday and go on there. And uh, my, my buddy, he's a Washington football team fan, he said, you're in a position that I'm usually at in this point in the season where – you're trying to find a reason to watch and cheer, you know? Yeah. And he said, we actually are back in and into the play. So we're, he said, what, is there anything, any chance you win against green Bay? Like what do you, I said, no, I mean, yes, there's a chance on any given Sunday that somebody, you know, that something happens. But what I was, what I thought was ready to happen was that Aaron Rodgers, which he did not have the day that I expected, like Jason said as well, but would be the ultimate juxtaposition of what we were trying to show or what we've been saying. And that is, here's Teddy, dink and dunk Teddy, who can't do certain things. And here's the opposite. Cam was somewhere in between. Cam could physically do those things and some things that nobody else could do. But Cam did not anticipate. He like, I always said he it was kind of a sight thrower. Like he needed to see the guy open before he threw it. Right? Is that he waited and waited until, all right, now he's open and I will get it to him like a rocket ship, which works a lot of times. Teddy Bridgewater doesn't have the ability the physical ability 
to throw the ball yeah. at an NFL level. I'm Absolutely. sorry. It's just not there, and it's just more and more apparent. Those balls, half of the fo- the completed passes were just – they looked so slow getting there. They looked like – I just thought, man, if you were – if if th- they should be picked off. It was um, – it showed exactly Teddy is not only is who he thought we was, he may be worse. Yeah, I yeah. think so too. Yeah. He's definitely worse than what I thought he was. Well, I, I, I like when he was first on. But I kind of feel like it's not even that he's worse. It's just you're seeing what happens when he has to elevate the team. And it's he not that he's worse, Cody, so. is that this, is we even, even some of the most pessimistic people overestimated how high the ceiling was. You know, that's yeah. why, it's not that he's worse, it's just like, gosh, this is all it can be? Seriously? I thought it could be a little bit better than this. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I thought he would be a little bit better of uh thank you just a little bit better it's awesome. not a lot but i mean like he can't he ain't throwing touchdowns he ain't throwing down the he is um worse than i expected and yeah. that's for My somebody that, that was okay. unhappy he was coming so i was not enthused he was coming here and he's even worse so like the main comparison that people make is alex smith right yeah, we call him the My black Alex Smith, and he's not even that good. <laughs> but he's not even as good as right. prime Alex Smith. Yeah, Alex he's not Smith even took close, his team. to be honest. Do y'all remember that Saints game? That big touchdown to Vernon Davis? What? When, mm. Oh, what? With, uh, with who? Oh, was, uh, two years ago? Two years ago? Is it, that what, I, it was a little bit before longer. Before the that. injury? I want to say before was, the injury? Hmm? Was it before the it's Alex pre-injury? Smith? This is yeah, way right. pre-injury. Yeah, okay. But was it? I want to say it was. Um, he actually started pushing the ball downfield more in later in his career, and I think that when and Andy Reid got a hold of him in Kansas City, it helped a little bit, and he became less conservative. Teddy has become more conservative throughout the season. And exactly. he, actually, so I wouldn't even say he's been more conservative. It just turns out he can't throw it past 20. Can't throw it's it past 20. All right, let's but keep going. We got a couple of calls. Let's power through and get the hell out of here. Okay, so part three, because I forgot two points. One, okay. Anybody who, you know, hates on Curtis Samuel for this past game, okay, it was cold as hell. Okay. Oh, it's yeah, hard he to did have a down cold. game a It's hard bit. to do anything when it's cold. If you've never been outside, whenever it is freezing cold, you know, like 20 what, degrees out, and try to do cold? anything, even with gloves on, you're going to have a hard time. At this point, okay, yeah. It's just going to happen. Cold, yeah. All right? Okay. I don't want to hear anybody. Really it wasn't even that cold out there. Now, it, I mean, it's warranted to <laughs> give him a little smack for it, but don't hate on the man. Yeah, we're okay. not going to hate him. It was his throw, worst game of the or, year. Uh, or that third down throw at the end of the game. But he won't That ball him. was not put where it should have been put. Okay? I it wonder was why. It needed to be a foot to the left. Okay? <laughs> if it was a foot to the left, Curtis Samuel would have caught that. If you look at the way that Curtis one Samuel Teddy B and D any of the receivers the have to bend in order to make the catches that Teddy throws, it's ridiculous. Okay, the fact that they're flexible enough to even be able to catch throws like that is astonishing. Because I can tell you right now, I wouldn't be. You know, I'm a little bit of a bigger dude, and I wouldn't be able to. So I don't know about you guys, but the other thing is too. Who do you guys think has been quietly having the year of their life? Okay, my money's on Fa. Fa, oh, yeah, He's pulled a sack right this on Aaron Rodgers. Fa has been has made himself known in just about every game that I've watched. And it's very subtle because Brian Burns on the other end, obviously he's going to get more attention because that's just who Brian Burns is. But well, F.A. has been quietly been having, a, having a year. At least that's what I think. Yeah, Let me know he's what you been guys a, think well. I, You know Keep what up. is that he has been 
Um, a needed piece, particularly since Stephen Weatherly is not uh, basically non-existent on the team. You know what I'm saying? I yep. mean, now he's yep, on yep. IR. His FA turned out to be a very important. Good call right there. Hey, fellas. Jason from Colorado. I don't know if you're doing the after, you know, post-game show. Cause it's really late out there. I don't blame you if you're passing on this week. But um, I got to say, I'm pretty happy with the way that this turned out. I mean, I don't. I know that there's a lot of people talking about like that loser mentality that you can't want your team to lose, but that's blah blah blah. But I, I don't think that there's any shame in the defeated army army bargaining for terms. And what I mean by that is that we're already out of the playoffs. We're the only thing, as far as you know, the organization is concerned that matters is getting set for next year, and that involves getting the best draft pick that we can. That involves laying the foundations for our future. Now, um, we didn't play well enough to win this. No, Teddy Bridgewater did not play well enough to win this game. Um, I loved the fight that the defense showed, though. The halftime adjustments, phenomenal. I'm not used to seeing that. I'm not used to it going in at halftime, getting shut out, and coming back, and then shutting out. That's that's pretty awesome, especially against Aaron Rodgers. I mean, we took completely took away their deep game. We uh, gave up a lot underneath, like we always do. But, I mean, we're, we do consistently keep high-powered offenses from scoring a lot of points. Um, my man Brian Burns with the clutch play at the end. I hope, you know, I don't think – it didn't look like he was too seriously hurt, but I hope it's serious enough that they keep him off the field for the rest of the season. There's no reason to get our guys hurt. Let's just start playing the seeds of next year's success. That involves keeping Christian McCaffrey healthy. That involves keeping Brian Burns healthy. Um, you know, I, there's no reason. I, I, we should be auditioning our less um, well-known players, in my mind, to see how they hold up under under stress. There was um, one of the guys on our defensive backfield. I don't remember. I can't remember the guy's name. It was like Morstead or, or something like Whitemore. I, well, I don't know. But um, we're, we're seeing a couple of unknown guys start showing up and making plays. Um, but... Yeah, you know, I think that this game, as far as uh, next year's vision is concerned, this is exactly what we wanted to have happen. Um, I'm optimistic. I wanted to say that I agreed with CK's point that he made about Marty Herney last week, where I'm, I'm not going to be heartbroken if, if we don't re-sign him, but if we do re-sign him, I don't believe that that's a guarantee of mediocrity either. Um, I do, however, think that if we don't find a way to keep Taylor Moten in this organization, either by signing him to a new contract or franchise tagging him or doing something, um, then I will firmly be against Marty Herman's decision-making. But well, we're anybody's. Get to you're going to have to um, tag him. Anyways, keep counting, guys. Um, we'll, we'll see you later. All right. Last call of the night. What's up, fellas? Uh, this is Zach from Greensboro again. What's um, up, Zach? Hope you all are doing well. Uh, I just want to let you all know that all I want for Christmas is by some fucking miracle – for us to draft Trevor Lawrence. I know that's mm. never going to happen. I know we literally have zero percent chance of it happening. But you know, just a Christmas miracle, wish, a Definitely Christmas love. miracle. I would love for us to draft that dude. All right, fellas. Uh, as always, I really love your podcast. I, um, I'm actually an Amazon delivery driver, so uh, you know, oh, I, God bless, um, bro. I actually listen to you guys at work. And uh, you guys helped me get through my day. And uh, I appreciate oh. what you do. I hope you all guys have a good one. Oh, man. What appreciate a great call you, to finish on. That's why I rock with y'all, man. See? What that, a great call to rock with y'all. Those are my favorite favorite calls, man. Like people that call mm-hmm. us in and tell us, man, that uh, I listen to y'all when I'm driving or you know, when I'm working, yeah, man. man. Like to know that, that we offer somebody some – some solace, some uh, a, an opportunity to kind of disconnect from your daily grind. Mm-hmm. Man, I love that shit, and that's why I'll keep on doing it. And my cripple ass will keep on coming up here, <laughs> making up outlandish trade scenarios, and saying all kinds of crazy shit. And I'll do it for you, yeah. and I have fun doing it, man. We I think that. Do- I think the biggest. If, I mean, if there's a critique of the podcast, it's the length. Right. I mean, like if there is no, 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 Tony, that is actually one of the things that's a benefit for him because he gets to like this covers three hours, three to four hours of his workday. 
Right. You know? But I think yeah. the benefit, though, I think there, on the other hand, there's a benefit to the to, to this type of long form discussion is that there is a group of people out there who are who are hungry for something more than just the top five bullet points. Tony, we yeah. still have 70 viewers right now. Yeah. Right We've now, we have 70 people viewers. People rock with y'all, man. Yeah. Uh, look, J-Dub here. Man, we appreciate you guys. The number's 252-228-5098. Smash the thumbs up button um, and subscribe to the podcast. Uh, like I tell everybody is this, is that the best thing you can do to help us as as a podcast is to simply share the link with a friend or five. You pick. I don't care. I don't want anything else from you other than just your opinions, your input, and a share. Uh, yeah. And you know what? Just say, we love, we love, look, it's like my wife was like this. Is I said, gosh, you know, it's like the holidays. I got to go do the podcast. She was like, you want to hang out with us and clean instead? I was like, I'm going to do the podcast, bitch. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway. Um, oh, man. I, uh, look, is I think in a roundabout way, we talked about the Packers game enough. I think we've talked about Marty Herney enough in the draft. So I think it's time to kind of round this sucker out and close it out with some ice up picks. Um, and my ice um CK, I want to ask you this before we get the ice up picks. Is I was watching you and supporting your stream today and sharing. I appreciate it. that, my dude. Yeah, no problem, man. It's like, look, you've done nothing but more for me, uh, so that's the least I can do. But at the same time, I closed it out. I was trying to share it in other places and stuff, and I get back on, and I go to Facebook Gaming. Is it becoming porn now? Is Facebook, Facebook gaming? gaming? Oh, yeah. because of the girls? Yeah. Is it becoming I mean, Instagram it's, it's porn? It's been that now? way for a long dude, time, that's dude. What, that's what streaming is. That's what Twitch is. Yeah, that's yeah. Like any female streamers, really? not all of them, but there's a lot that take uh, heavy advantage of the fact that they uh, realize that there are going to be teenage boys watching. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. And thirty-year-old simps who have this podcast would be so. We'd have so years. many subscribers if I had titties. Oh. Yeah, I was. Uh, I'm really debating on whether I need to show cleavage or not. Honestly, <laughs> uh, you're gonna have to shave that beard and get a little take some hormone action, probably. All right, no, uh, let's get to some ice up picks. Has anybody got anything uh, fresh on their mind? Yeah, yet? I do. I All can right. jump in there fast. Yeah, let's go. Uh, I'm ice up Dwayne Haskins, man. Dwayne Haskins um, was photographed um, not only without a mask. But you know, that's, you know, f fucking whatever, man. But on top of that, it was where he was at. He was at a strip club. Homeboy was at a strip club without a mask on uh, around all these strippers and shit. And my thing is this. I've been saying so much of the success of a quarterback is dependent on where they get drafted to and what scenario they go to. I really like Dwayne Hassan's coming out of Ohio State. I thought he would have a better trajectory than he did, but it has not panned out for homeboy. And on top of that, you know the narrative around you is that you're a bust, that you can't win the starting job, that you're not this, you're not that. Yeah. You're a wasted first-round pick. Yeah, even if you got a shitty luck of the draw, bro, what do you think it does to you being at a strip club? You don't in the get COVID the season, from a girl's bro. ass, yo. Yeah, man, dude. It's, it's... <laughs> oh, I just gave you the best argument for. Oh, never mind. Whatever, man. All I know is that Dwayne Haskins uh, shows uh, no self awareness uh, in doing this. So, um, hey, man, I know you want to see some titties sometime. I, I know, I know the feeling, but bro, uh, it ain't worth it when you're the fifteenth pick in the draft and everyone's talking shit about you. So, uh. To uh to my man Dwayne, ice up, son. All right, uh, my ice up picks ice gonna go to myself, up. um, and not for a ri ridiculous reason, uh, but prior to the presidential election, I got concerned about volatility in the market, and I have a small stock account that I started with two thousand dollars with in twenty fifteen. Okay. Right, it's like my fantasy stock account, you know, like I just play with it on my own. 
And I have oh, made no. a significant amount of money off of Square stock yes. over the last five years. It's been my darling stock since like 2016. I got the first time I ever mm-hmm. bought it was at twenty five dollars. So um, my stock, I the the last buy in that I had in on, on it was like sixty four bucks, and uh, the stock hit one ninety four. Um, okay. C- a couple of days before the election, and I was worried about the res- of what the election potentially could do to the market, and we were having a couple of down days. I put a stop sell on it, so as like if it touches one sixty seven, I'm gonna sell p- a portion off. I only s- I sold uh mm-hmm. I sold six shares out of sixteen, so I'm down to ten shares now. But I'm icing myself up for this is that. I'm only, I'm 39 years old. When you got a winner, you just stick with a winner. This bitch is at $241.58 right now. Ooh! And then on top of that, if I would have just stuck with the 30 shares that I bought in 2016, rocket ship. So to me, I said, yeah. I don't know. I don't think it was a bad move, but it was one of those moves. It's still there. a dog. You know, you just get yeah, off. You're still on a yeah, net positive, you bro. get off the little. Yeah. You get off the horse a little too early. You know what I'm saying? So that's me. I said, God no, Square is crushing it. All right, who's next? <laughs> I'll go an easy one. Uh, yeah, uh, Steelers. Ice up. Oh, amen to that. <laughs> They're <bullies. laughs> Shout out Juju. <laughs> Juju on that beat. <laughs> Oh, Jason, boy. you got a ice up pick well, first? Yeah, man. Uh, my ice up pick goes to the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, who yeah. I'm not even going to describe the things that Alabama's going to do to them, but just know that it will be straight up devastation and humiliation. And honestly, I can't wait because I never like Notre Dame because they're always overrated and they always get exposed. So ice up, Dame. Ice up. I saw. Prod- you must pretty be a good Protestant. Te- pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good team to beat him, too, if I don't say so myself. He must be Protestant. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the C3 <laughs> Panthers podcast. Oh, yeah. The number's 252-228-5098. They used to call me Tony Catholic in college. Jason Hewitt, thank you for joining us. Where can they find your work at? Hey, they can find... They can find my work and my colleagues work at si.com slash NFL slash Panthers. And be sure to follow our Twitter at si underscore Panthers. We stay dropping that real talk. So go ahead and give us a follow and our stuff. We drop dope stuff and we're always connected with y'all. So man, it was great yep. hanging out with you tonight. CK, man of uh, many video y'all. games. CK, how can they get after you? Um, you can find me on Facebook Gaming. Uh, it's going to be Coat Dizzle Allen. Uh, we're making moves, bro. We're making moves. We're moving up in the world, and uh, hopefully you guys can come along for the ride. Are you getting the tattoo? Um, At some point, yes. You better live up to that. I want once, some input. Once COVID's over, I think, for sure. I want some input on it. And uh, <laughs> Cody Lashney, uh, how can they follow you? Yeah, follow me on Twitter at Cody Lack, C O D Y L A C. Um, I'm good about answering messages and replies and all that good stuff. Uh, also, check out drafttech.com. I'm the Panthers analyst for uh, for drafttech.com. And I work write about all too. the. Huh? You're putting in that work. I, I yeah, mean, man. I, I, mean, dude, I listen, read that last one. Listen, man, to, to all the 67 people watching right now, I don't know how many people actually go and read my stuff on Draft Tech, but I really do put a lot of work into those, man. And I put a lot of time and effort and attention to detail in them. And um, I'm just saying, if you look at some of the stuff I write compared to um, other publications out there that uh, you know claim to do real journalism, I, I think my stuff uh, holds its own. You know, So check your boy out, drafttech.com. I write a full write-up for the first uh, uh, Panthers pick. And by the time the draft rolls around, I'll do comments for the first and second round for the Carolina Panthers. That's drafttech.com. 
Holla at your boy. Market update. Yes, PayPal is only $2 ahead of Square right now. That's so stupid in the world of reality. Anyway, <laughs> my name's Tony Dunn. You can follow me at cat underscore chronicles. We're here every Tuesday night. We'll be here after this post game. And look, I want to give everybody, um, you know, just well wishes for the holidays. Uh, I mean, stay safe out there, whatever that means. Um, you know, God bless your families. Um, do something nice for your neighbor or for someone who needs some help. Uh, that's what yeah. I would suggest is that just do look is that uh, look at your life and find the things that you should be happy and blessed about. There's a lot more generally um, than you think when you spend that five minutes to just introspect. I know it's hard sometimes when we're grinding and working and, and doing all of that and we, and we get worn down, but you know, um, look, if you're hearing this message, I hope you have a happy holidays. Merry Christmas. If you're Christian, happy Hanukkah. If you're Jewish, if you don't believe in any of it, just be nice to your neighbor. And, uh, that's it. Go, go Panthers and screw the Falcons. And, uh, 